and uh, with, you know, with the last game involved comebacks and involved a great uh, individual effort, great team play. Uh, we just think we're going to be in for another treat tonight. We're glad to be here. When we did the first game over at Uniontown mid in mid-January, the feeling coming out of that ball game that Uniontown, I mean, excuse me, Laurel Highlands was the better basketball team. Since that time, though, without a doubt in anybody's mind, the Red Raiders have worked their way back to the number one team in the WPO. A serious stumping of Pittsburgh Central Catholic last a week ago, Friday night. Without a doubt in anybody's mind, I think Uniontown right now playing better basketball. You never underestimate the power of momentum, especially when you're talking about the young athletes like these high school students we have out here right now. And there's no doubt, Uniontown, uh, they are on a definite roll. You mentioned the game against Central Catholic. Of course, uh, a, a big win against Connellsville well, a couple yeah. of weeks back. And, and really, since the uh, Laurel Highlands loss. They have been on a roll. Exactly. Uh, they have been unstoppable. And Laurel Highlands, meanwhile, has struggled a bit. They lost on, uh, as we mentioned uh, during the girls' game moments ago, they lost on this floor to Albert Gallup. Uh, a couple of weeks back, and that Lost. seemed to start them into a little bit of a, a lull. When I say lull, it's not like they played horrible, but a couple of non-section uh, losses, including Woodland one to Woodland Hills. They lost to Connellsville, of course, earlier this week. Uh, they're struggling, but you know, Joe, the great thing about a rivalry like this is sometimes you just throw that all out you the window. You find it in a hurry. Exactly. You find it. The first game down at Uniontown area, we talked a lot about defensive pressure and being able to handle it, and Laurel Highlands come up so huge that night. Craig Radcliffe uh, off at the point, ran the show extremely well. Great play from A.J. Swintoski, and uh, Mark Hicks uh, stepped his game big time. Tonight, I think the same situation. I think Radcliffe has to be the key again handling the basketball. And L.H. struggled early in that game and did fall behind because of it, but as the game went on, uh, they were more sure of themselves, played very well during the second and third periods. As you said, they took care of the basketball, and then in the fourth quarter, Uniontown ratcheted up that pressure a bit and made that great comeback that forced that game into overtime. But for the most part, L.H. looking very good, uh, limiting the turnovers, and you're right. They have to do that again tonight. Down at Uniontown area, really it was a one-man show that night for the Red Raiders. Nelson Jones, 27 points if I remember right, just had a huge game for the Red Raiders. Kind of really kept the Red Raiders afloat today because he did not get a whole lot of help from his partners. But since that game, Chris Jacobs has turned his game up. They've gotten great play from Brandon Duncan. David Winfrey has become solid. And Nelson Jones has just fallen back into his very steady role. He was, if they have a game from him like that tonight, they get anybody a little bit of help. I think they're in great shape this evening. And Terrence Vaughn's, of course, a yeah. major contributor offensively, and he struggled that night. And, if, and, and uh, one of the big factors in that first game was when Derry Jenkins was injured in that game. Yeah. And uh, he was no longer a factor then for, I'd say, about three, a half to three quarters of the game. And, uh, and they need him as well. But speaking of injuries, he's been struggling with injuries pretty much since that night. Yeah, a little bit of a knee injury was telling me I had a chance to talk to him a little bit before the ball game last night at the girls game. And he told me, he said his knee was uh, hurting him. He didn't know if Coach Chuck was going to play him tonight. But since then, they got a young man who stepped up very nicely for him in Brandon Duncan. And they've also got some good play from Mark Campert off the bench. Uh, Dave Chuck is very high on the on the sophomore Brandon Duncan thinks he's a very skilled player good player he can shoot from outside good on the re uh, good on the boards at rebounding uh, defensively strong but still kind of learning to play Dave Chuck defense as a sophomore but uh, but yeah he's a, he's a young guy and not a guy you want to depend on in a game like this but he's a nice guy to have uh, as a role player as either a fifth starter or a guy coming off the bench and and don't be surprised if he, he doesn't play a big role tonight we'll find out as the game goes on now this game has other implications beside the section title on the line for both these teams. Uh, looking ahead to the WP Plus, in fact, Laurel Highlands could actually slip into a tie with its second place with the Connellsville Falcons. If Connellsville can defeat AG tonight and LH gets beat here tonight by Utah, now we have a mess at second place. Uniontown wins. I think they're the number one seed in the Quad A playoffs. They're the number one ranked team right now at the WPO. They have eliminated, the, they defeated Pittsburgh Central Catholic once. Played them very well at Oakland in the first game. They're on a roll. And if it's like the NCAA tournament, you start looking at the way teams are playing at the end of the year. Right. I think they're the consensus number one seed. LH, I think, could be right in the middle of that pack somewhere if they lose tonight. Well, Uniontown started the year as the number one ranked team, and as you said, they're finishing the year as the number one ranked team if they win tonight. I, I think it would be a great injustice if they didn't receive the number one seed. Of course, Fayette County teams receiving an injustice from the WPIAL. Oh, we never heard of that. Uh, but we'll have to wait and see on that. As far as Laurel Highlands is concerned, if they lose tonight and Connellsville wins over in York Run against the Colonials of Albert Gallatin, uh, I think Laurel Highlands probably slips to the third seed out of this section, be yeah. being tied with Connellsville 
Connellsville. They split their two games, uh, but Connellsville, as you said, how do you play down the stretch? Connellsville playing better right now, and also uh, they were a ranked team earlier in the year. Also uh, got up as high as third in the rankings. So, yeah, I think if they finish, uh, Connellsville and Laurel Highlands finishes tied, Connellsville will get the higher seed, which means Laurel Highlands gets the tougher first-round matchup. Now, so they need to win this game. Okay, let's look at it in the opposite respect here. If LH would win tonight, in the W Powers, there's a tie for the section title. But in LH's eyes, we've defeated you twice. It's ours. That pushes them maybe to a high seat, a higher seed, possibly a fifth or a sixth seed. No, or possibly a four even. Yeah, I think they definitely get the higher seed of, of them in Uniontown if they win tonight. Uh, and, and the question is of the section champs, you know, where would they be? Uh, yeah, I think fourth, maybe maybe third. If you're looking at Uniontown as the top dog right now, if LH knocks them off tonight, they've swept them. Yeah. Uh, they're not going to be the number one seed, but they've got to be way up there. And again, then Uniontown gets a tougher first round matchup. So you're right. If you're thinking of the Whippeal playoffs, uh, that just adds to the importance yeah, you of tonight's think about game. It. This is almost like one of them games where you can go from being very high seated to being right in the middle of the pack. Right. And honestly, if you think about it, here's three, two basketball teams, LH and Uniontown. If they get higher seeds, they're gonna get to play home, closer to home, which means bigger crowds. And that's something you want in that opening round playoff. You wanna be as close to home as possible. Plus you need to win well, you don't need to win with the expanded playoffs this year. Ten teams now go into the state tournament from the WPIAL, so two teams that lose in the first round will still advance, but to guarantee yourself a spot in the state tournament, you need to win that first round game. So if you're looking at it, especially from Laurel Highland's standpoint, uh, you don't want to drop down and have to play one of the uh, other section champions, which if LH goes in as the number three team out of this section, they probably have to go up against uh, some section champion. They can find themselves not qualifying for the and, state and right tournament. Right now, you're looking at section champions Champions, um, Pittsburgh Central Catholic is one of them. Montour and Chartres Valley will play Monday night after the tragedy in Montour. The Spartans come up with a huge win last night. Congratulations to them. A very gut-wrenching, but they went down up to St. Clair, did what they had to do. Right. A great job by the Montour Spartans. And um, they are sitting pretty if they defeat Chartres Valley. So there's two very good basketball teams there. LH, I think, both these teams, I think, stack up very well with those teams. So it's not as desperate as it looks, because I don't think Quad A overall, top to bottom, is as strong as it has been in the past. I think really and honestly, I told some people this, and don't take me wrong, if Uniontown comes to play, in my mind, it becomes a Uniontown invitation. I think they're the team to beat if they play the kind of defense Dave Shuck wants them to play, and if they can shoot from the outside with Bonds and Jenkins, assuming that he's healthy, uh, if they can hit from the outside, and Nelson Jones, of course, doing what he can do inside and outside, yeah, I think Uniontown's the team to beat in the WPIAL, but the great thing about playoff basketball when you talk about high school kids is you never know, yeah. and uh, I remember last year when a Shenley powerhouse team came in and everybody said they were the team to beat, and who, who beat them in the first round? The Uniontown Red Raiders. That's right. Them. You know, actually, this is no, I, I, I seriously think this, Last year, going into the Western Regionals, everybody talked about Erie Cathedral Prep and right. Shenley, and nobody mentioned the Utah Red Raiders. Seriously, if I thought about it, I was talking to some people today, the only team I think, honestly, and if Uniontown is playing, and that's all things equal, Utah's playing well, the only team in the whole entire Western Regional that I would be really concerned with them going in and playing is Shenley in the state playoffs. Well, and, uh, and we'll, we'll have to see, of course, when that comes about. Could be getting ahead of ourselves a little bit, but it wouldn't surprise me if we don't see them uh, matched up in the state playoffs. Of course, uh, uh, they won't meet until uh, they won't meet until well into then. Now, uh, as, as far as again, as far as this game goes, though, Laurel Highlands, Uniontown. Yeah. You wonder how much of that they're even going to think about those players out on the floor. Uh, we well, think about it. We the coaches it. think about it. Exactly. The players, all they're thinking about is. I, I live next to these guys, I play these guys all year long, and I want bragging rights for the spring, the summer, and the fall. And for LH, uh, I'll tell you what, a W here tonight, they get big bragging rights. Yeah. They've beaten them twice in, a, twice in a, one year. But the 76th meeting between the Laurel Highlands Mustangs and the Union Town Red Raiders, about ready to be played out up here at Laurel Highlands Senior High School. Uh, a small crowd on hand. <laughs> and we're, we're right, about, we're right in the middle fans. of it. We've had we're, little skirmishes earlier. And we're, we're sitting down right now because we know once this game starts, we're going to have to stand yeah. up or we're not going to see anything. We're right in the middle of the crowd, and right now all I see are the back of people's heads. But uh, it should be a good one. Coming up next, it's the showdown for the section. The Class 4A Section 2 title on the line tonight at Laurel Highlands. It's the Mustangs and the Red Raiders. It's the 76th meeting. And you know what? That's all you have to say. Coming up next, it's LH in Uniontown.
Alarm Monitoring Systems located at 611 Avenue in Uniontown. We sell, service, and install. The cost of annual monitoring is $96. Our own 24-hour local central station offers monitoring of security systems and 24-hour emergency repair service. We also offer medical alert, fire safety, insurance deduction. Call 439-1180 or 437-6101. Did you know you can renew your driver's license and auto registration on the spot all in one location at AAA at 111 West Main Street in Uniontown. We have the best prices in Fayette County and courteous AAA service. Ask about AAA member discounts. State and service fees apply. AAA located at 111 West Main Street in Uniontown. Call 438-8575. For almost 25 years, Davis & Davis has been providing legal help for local people involved in accidents, trip and fall, defective products, drunk driving victims. Get the help you need at Davis & Davis, a team of professionals working for you. Okay, we welcome you back to Laurel Highlands Senior High School for tonight's matchup between the Red Raiders of Uniontown and the Mustangs of Laurel Highlands. At, at stake tonight, the WPIL Class Section 2 Quad A Championship. I got that back screwed up a little bit there. <laughs> Quad A Section 2 Championship tonight uh, here at Laurel Highlands High School. And uh, Chuck, it's as simple as this. Whoever can handle the pressure of both teams tonight, whoever handles the other one's pressure defense better, I think walks away with a W. Union Town likes to play up-tempo, but Laurel Highland's not afraid to run as well. They're going to try to push the ball up and down the court as well. Uh, Union Town will be playing almost exclusively in the man-to-man -man defense, but LH is going to counter probably with a, a lot of man themselves, and you're right, whoever can handle the ball better uh, I think should do pretty well. You mentioned WPIAL. We all know what that stands for. Tonight we're finding out what SRO stands for. It's standing room only, yeah, and I'm, we I'm, have a capacity crowd. I really crowd. wonder how many tickets they've sold for the auditorium. Whew. That's right. Uh, what is it? Closed circuit. circuit TV down there. So Mike Tyson fight is on tonight if you uh, <laughs> need something uh, to do. But uh, I'll tell you what, this place, they can't get any more people in here. And I'll bet every one of them is uh, watching us now. Uh, probably raced home to, to watch the uh, doubleheader broadcast here the same night of the game right here on HSTV Sports. And we're getting ready for the starting lineups. And, uh, and this is the final regular season section game. I think Utah does have an exhibition game scheduled for Monday night. And we're going to go with the National Anthem first and then the starting lineups. Okay, as Laurel Highlands alma mater now being sang, they did a great job with the national anthem by the Laurel Highlands uh, choir. As the alma mater now being played, and I'll tell you what, Chuck, Laurel Highlands is one of the places that really get into their alma mater. Oh yeah, and uh, you remember back at Uniontown uh, when Uniontown did their alma mater, Laurel Highlands turned around and sang theirs at the same time. Uh, Uniontown trying to do the, the same thing here tonight. Now it's cooling alma maters. But I'll tell you what, a lot of atmosphere here tonight at Laurel Highlands Senior High School packed house. 
And I'll tell you what, this is what it's supposed to be like. It's almost like a college atmosphere tonight. Yeah, this is high school athletics at its best, and we, we talked about that throughout the game one, and I expect more of the same tonight. A great uh, uh, group of fans on both sides. Uh, they're here to cheer on their team, and they're here to support their school. You see that on both sides. A great tradition to this rivalry that dates back over 30 years, and, and, and uh, uh, you know, th this, is, this, is what it's, this is what these kids work for all year long. This is what they count down to. This is the most important game of their season uh, until the playoffs start, but, and maybe even beyond yeah. that. Four of the five starting last starters are definitely known for Uniontown. It should be Jacobs, Vaughn, Jones, and Winfrey. The fifth starter will either be De'Ara Jenkins or Brandon Duncan, and it will be Brandon Duncan, so that will be the fifth starter for the Uniontown area Red Raiders tonight. Duncan was in the, inserted into the lineup when De'Ara Jenkins injured himself over in the first LH game. Brandon Duncan, a 6'2", uh, sophomore forward, and again, he'll uh, hurt you from the outside, and uh, very good, very strong on the boards as well, and uh, he'll play a key role tonight. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how much uh, how much PT Deary Jenkins gets as the night goes on. Well, I think Coach Chuck would like to start getting him back in because he's going to need him, I think, in the playoffs. He's going to need him tonight. Yeah, he may need him. But you know what? As important as this basketball game is, Uniontown can still walk out here no matter what happens with at least a share of the section title, which would be their 38th, which is remarkable. And uh, uh, and uh, we mentioned this uh, again moments ago at the end of the girls' game, but that is the most. Their 37 is the most in the WBIAL. Yeah. They're definitely going to make it 38, whether they do so as co-champions or, or as exclusive outright. champions. Yeah. But uh, and a new banner in the gym now is a decade is a um, century of excellence. excellence yeah. and with the four state titles, the 38 now, they have to add another section title to it. And I believe it's like 40 some, 47 WPIL playoff appearances. Right, which they've already uh, already clinched, of course, number 48 there. And uh, they may be able to add to those uh, Whippy Old State titles, too, as the, as the time goes on. But meanwhile, uh, you're watching the Laurel Highlands Mustangs starting lineup come out. And let's you know, not forget there's two teams this, out there. I don't think this is their starting lineup. I think they're introducing everybody tonight. Yes, they are. And they're introducing everybody tonight. So LH is going to introduce everybody and then go with the starting fives. A little emotional ploy there by head coach Mark John. I think John. so, too. And I think what it does is it lengthens his ball game at the start of the ball game a little bit longer, makes Uniontown think a little bit more up here. Well, these are two of the best coaches around, too, when you talk about Mark John and Dave Schuck. They've been in this business for a long time. They know how to motivate young people. They know how to coach young people. They know how to teach young people. They're good people, and they're good coaches. Well, Mark John will play mind games with you in his gymnasium. You know, he will play mind games without a doubt. And this is just a little one that he's playing against his cross-time rivals, the Uniontown Red Raiders. But uh, Laurel Highlands has not been in the playoff picture the last couple of years. And so for some of these guys, or for most of these guys, it's a new experience. Yeah, and last year, of course, they had high hopes going into last year. And uh, Dan Bosnick got hurt, and they kind of took the uh, wind out of their sails right for the entire Came season. Came down to the last game over in Uniontown. Exactly. Now, this year, uh, they perhaps weren't as highly regarded. I think a lot of people thought they'd finish third in the section. They surprised a lot of people with that win against Connellsville earlier this year. And, uh, and then they really opened up a lot of eyes when they defeated Uniontown. It's been a fantastic year for both of these teams. And tonight, it's gonna, uh, the success of this season is just going to be ratcheted up another notch <coughs> for either Uniontown or Laurel Highlands. So the starting five for the Mustangs tonight, it'll be Radcliffe, Hicks, Wintoski, Mahoney, and Force. <coughs> as a case of the cost come through and as the um, Mustangs meet in the middle of the floor, a packed house, as always, <coughs> when the Mustangs and the Red Raiders, I'll tell you what, at 6 o'clock when they tipped the JV game off, this place was three quarters of the way full. And Uniontown, of course, uh, congratulations to the Red Raiders as they pick up the victory, by the way, in the uh, JV game. And, yep. uh, but this is the one that counts, and this is what it's all about. Uniontown, just one loss in the section on the year. That was at home to Laurel Highlands. LH, uh, they come in 10 and 1. LH comes in at 9 and 2, having lost on their home court to Albert Gallatin, and earlier this week at Connellsville. And tonight, we find out who the section champs are. Well, and you know what, Chuck? We could take it away again first quarter to get it started here. As the Mustangs and Raiders meet in the floor, the Raiders in the maroon uniforms, white trim, the Mustangs in the white uniforms with the blue and red trims, in case nobody knows the school colors. And as soon as the final buzzer went off in the first game, I've been looking forward to this rematch, ready to go, and Nelson Jones and Nathan Force will jump center and get this thing underway. Force controls the tip, Riley gets the ball, and the Mustangs get the opening possession of the game. Uniontown in the man-to-man, -man. nice deflection there, and the uh, loose ball is picked up by Force. That's no good. Second opportunity, no good by Mahoney. Ball chased down in the corner, and the Mustangs retain possession. Now we'll get the long three, and that is no good. Air ball 
put up by Swintoski. Nelson Jones there, and back come the Raiders. Duncan loses the ball. And we get a wild scramble as things go a little crazy here right off the top, but Uniontown wouldn't mind that. To it, LH got a couple good looks at the basket early there. And Uniontown, it's man to man. Now Hicks, dribble drive baseline, gets the roll. And the first two of the night go to the Mustangs. They take a two-zip lead. He's the slasher. He's the kid that can put it on the floor and go to the glass. And they're going to have to have an answer for him. Winfrey tries to get it to Barnes. That doesn't work. Ball is stolen by the Mustangs. And one minute into the game, the Mustangs will try to add to their lead. Again, Swentoski for three. That's strong. And the rebound by Duncan. Raiders looking to run. Here's Nelson Jones. And he draws contact. That's on Radcliffe. First foul of the night goes to Craig Radcliffe. Jones will go to the line for two. Nelson Jones, the only Red Raiders starter with the same number on his road no, jersey no, as no, he no. has on his home jersey. He's number 10 at home. Oh, that's right. You're right. It is, it's different there as well. They're, the only yeah. one that's the same is Adam Bozic. There you go. Bozic. Okay. In fact, and, Uniontown is the proper way uniforms are supposed to be done, even at home, out on the road. And everybody's number is one higher here on the road, except for uh, Vaughn's, who goes down one from 24 to yeah. 23. Now Jones hits both. And we are tied at two opening minutes in this crucial, crucial matchup. Arch rivals battling for the section title. Uniontown in the man. This, this is the important matchup here, Winfrey on Craig Radcliffe. Now Not Mahoney over. baseline, oh. got it. Timmy Mahoney off the baseline dribble. Tell you what, they've gotten some good penetration to start the basketball game here, Laurel Hodges. And sloppy play by the Red Raiders as Jones throws it out of bounds. Winfrey wasn't looking, Jones with the bounce pass, and the ball just rolled out of bounds, uncontested. And the Mustangs with a chance to add to their lead. Two good moves by Mahoney and Hicks to start the ball game for L.H. L.H. will not be intimidated. They play against these guys all the time. Swintoski for three. Uniontown beats a lot of teams before the opening buzzer because of their defensive pressure. Teams are intimidated by the Red Raiders, but familiarity breeds contempt, and the Mustangs are not going to be scared to take it right at Uniontown. Sintoski had a good game down at uh, Uniontown the first time. Brandon Duncan, no good. Jones battling for the rebound, but no, it's instead chased down by Swintoski. He'll pull up at the three-point circle. Gets it back, but shuffles the feet. Oh. Hey, Chuck, gets that rim down there. Well, that's right. We just saw the uh, Uniontown girls, and they were on the same rim in the first half. Only one field goal in the entire half. And so far, the uh, Red Raider boys team having some shooting problems as well. 5.45 left in the first period, and LH leads it 7-2. to two. LH doing a good job of jumping over the top to down screen. Bonds tries to kick it into Nelson Jones, and Mark Hicks swats it out of bounds. Uniontown will inbounds under the rim. Again, LH went man-to-man -man almost the entire first matchup. They start oh, nice out on the man pass. here. Nice feed to Jones. Chris Jacobs with the assist. First field goal of the night for the Red Raiders. Jones has all four Uniontown points. It's 7-4 to four, Laurel Highlands. And now we'll get a foul on the floor. They're going to wave the bucket off. Mahoney on the drive, but the foul is called, I believe, on Terrence Vaughns, and that will be his first, first team foul on the Red Raiders. 7-4, Mustangs. Lead by a three, almost throwing it away, but Mahoney will be able to chase it down. And you can go to the backcourt and retrieve the inbounds pass. Now Swintoski checked by Duncan. Brandon Duncan, good pressure defense on Swintoski. Oh, near steal by Winfrey. Now on the dribble drive, Radcliffe, no good. Second shot, no good. Duncan with the rebound. And he throws it away. Another Red Raider turnover. Uniontown needs to just settle in a little bit here. You know, you, like you said, the pressure may be on Uniontown here a little bit tonight. Official timeout as Nathan Force will lace up the footwear. 5.06 in the first period. Laurel Highlands off to a quick start. Ran out to a 7-2 lead. Now it's 7-4. Here's Swintoski from the elbow. That's no good. And Jones gets the carom. Winfrey will trot it up. Trying to run Vaughn's on the baseline screen. He gets it, puts it up for three, and gets the drop. Coach Makoviak would have took one of them last night. Around and in. First three for Vaughn's, and we're tied at seven. Now here comes <laughs> oh, Good Hicks. move by Mark Hicks. Draws contact, he'll go to the line for two. 
They'll call this one on Nelson Jones, his first foul. Second team foul on the Raiders, 4.41 in the first period. We're tied at seven, and Mark Hicks will take the Mustangs' first free throws of the night. Mark Hicks finding a way to get to the basket right now and get himself to the foul line. Remember, LH did not shoot free throws particularly well down at Union Town. Amazing they were able to win that game in spite of their free throw troubles. That game never should have gone like into a, overtime. We had it for like 11 of 28 now. Something along those lines. That's what kept Uniontown in the game. Hicks makes the first, and Hicks makes the second. We're at 9 to 7. Mustangs with a two-point lead. Raiders with the basketball. Stayed in there man to man. Winfrey up top. That's Vaughn. Winfrey. Uniontown doesn't want Winfrey taking that outside shot. They need to get a little bit of penetration. The guards need to step in. Somebody needs to make a move to the basket. Winfrey's something. a classic point guard. This is what he can do. Penetrates. Shot no good, but Duncan on the follow. There's Brandon Duncan in the starting lineup because of the injury to De'Ari Jenkins and contributes early four minutes into this game. We are tied at nine, and so far, everything we expected and more. Now Mark Hicks. And if we get a hold, that's going to be on... Um, Chris Jacobs, I do believe. No, actually, they're going to get Vaughn's. I thought Jacobs as well, oh. but they're going to tee up Vaughn's for that, and that's his second foul early in this game. And we'll see what Coach Chuck tries to do, uh, or decides to do here as far as Terrence Vaughn's is concerned. Two early fouls. We'll see if he keeps him in. He'll keep him in at least for now as Laurel Highlands inbounds under the basket. Swintoski by Duncan. Pulls it up, puts it up. No good. And Duncan strong with the and rebound. And Duncan with three, three off rebounds already in a bucket. Oh, now Jacobs, baseline, there. strong drive, and he gets the drop. Chris Jacobs, nice move to the glass. Got a good screen and was able to put it on the floor. First lead of the night by the Red Raiders. That's and here's a steal. Terrence Vaughn. Swintoski will try to catch him. Can't do it. And check that. That was Mahoney. And Mark John won a 30. Absolutely. Terrence Vaughn. Five points early, and the Red Raiders have run out to their biggest lead early in this game. It's 13-9. Mahoney couldn't catch up after that pass was stolen. Bonds gets the breakaway, and with 3.29 left in the first period, Mark Johns wants to talk it over. It's a 9-2 run right now by the Red Raiders. It was a 7-4 ball game. And I'll tell you what, they did a good job down here setting some screens, and Terrence Vaughns and Chris Jacobs, once they put it on the floor, they're hard to contain. Double header action here on HSTV Sports. The girls' game, not as close as we thought it would be, as the uh, Phillies with an easy win over the uh, Uniontown Red Raiders to advance into the WPIAL girls' playoff action. Moments ago, you saw that. Now you're enjoying the boys' game, and of course, uh, you'll get uh, more opportunities if you're watching this on our initial showing Friday night. We'll have more opportunities to see it over the weekend. We'll uh, run down that weekend schedule for you a bit later on in the game. Now we're back to action. Laurel Highlands Five, with three, the basketball one. and down by four. And yes, Uniontown comes out in a uh, zone now, defense. That's a little one, two, two. Well, a nice uh, change up off the uh, timeout by Coach oh, yeah. Chuck and, and Mahoney stepped on the sideline, so a turnover for the Mustangs. I like that strategy coming out of the timeout. Give them a different look. It's a little one, two. They started their one, three, three, one, three, one, and dropped it into a one, two, two, and trapped it on the sidelines. Time just running that little baseline screen. Vaughn's and Duncan both trying to run the baseline, and now and a carry. Ball. Starting David to see had, that. David had the Allen Iverson born. WPIL said they were going to call that carry more uh, in the PIAA this year. We didn't see it early in the year, but lately we've started to see that carry called more. No doubt that uh, Winfrey turned it over. So three minutes left in the first quarter. Mustangs will try to narrow that four-point deficit. Here's Hicks' baseline. Some contact. No call. Shot doesn't go, and Jones with the rebound. Back on the Raiders. Winfrey up top. Again, Vaughns and Duncan, Duncan will be the shooters in this uh, lineup. And there is Duncan for three. Second three-point shot of the night for the Red Raiders. Duncan has five, and suddenly Uniontown down by five early, lead by seven now. And a near steal. Hicks is able to maintain possession, and stolen by Vaughns. Vaughns ahead of the field. Can Radcliffe, well, he does disrupt the shot, but commits the foul. Chuck, who has the other three for Uniontown? Terrence Vaughns nailed a three okay. early in the game. He has five. Duncan also has five with a three. And Vaughns will now have a chance to add to that as he goes to the line. The foul called on Craig Radcliffe. That is his second, second team foul on the Mustangs. And right now, the Red Raiders really starting to uh, open this up a little bit. 
I thought it was a good timeout by Mark Johns. You do not want to let things get out of hand. The Uniontown Red Raiders, the kind of team that can win a basketball game in a three-minute stretch, and you have to try to avoid that kind of a run. And right now, they are on a, third, a 15, uh, 13, uh, 14 to two run. I'll get my math right. Vaughns makes both. It's now 18 to nine. Paul Phillips comes into the game, number 12, his first action for the Mustangs. And a near throw away. Now underneath, force forces one. That doesn't go, but gets the second opportunity. And he puts it up and in for his first field goal of the night. It's 11 to 18 now, and a steal. Back come the Mustangs. They're gonna try to run. There's force, contact, he'll go to the line. And the Mustangs answer. Well, so far it's up and down, but I think if it's at this pace, you need Town's advantage. That foul will be called on Winfrey. That's his first, fourth team foul. And Nathan Force will go to the line, looking for his third and fourth points right now. Nathan Force, a 6'5 junior, in his third year as being a contributor to this Mustang team. And what a fine football player he's been as well for Laurel Highlands over the past few years. He makes the first. I'll tell you what, he had a big game down at Uniontown. That was just like his first game really back in action. Force and Hicks combined for, I believe, 39 points inside, and that was the difference for the Mustangs when they pulled off that big victory. Well, now they Force got it makes, back to five. Force makes both. It's 18 to 13, four points of the night for Nathan. It's been a fast-paced first period, a lot of great action. This is what we expected, this is what we hoped for, and this is what we've gotten so far. Now Jacobs out of bounds off of Hicks. He tries to say Jacobs touched it last, and the official won't bite. David Winfrey right now. Utah's uh, settled in very nicely. See if LH has withstanded the um, the run there, though. They've done a nice, they did a nice job. See if they can get themselves back in it. They've cut it to five. Winfrey thought about the drive. Phillips cutting him off. Now trying to hit Vaughn, cutting through the lane. Couldn't handle the pass. Force picks it up, and back come the Mustangs. Well, we had a game at Uniontown was a game of runs, and right now that's what we're getting here. Miscommunication as uh, Force and Phillips not on the same wavelength. Phillips stopped just as uh, I said Force uh, checked that. Uh, obviously Radcliffe, just as Radcliffe delivered that bounce pass, it goes out of bounds. The Mustangs turn it over. Now the Raiders try to extend their five-point lead. And yeah, we're gonna get a bump on Riley. For Phillips, excuse me. And that's gonna be a 13 foul. As David Winfrey tried to go around him. And Gatiss, Kevin Gatiss is now gonna come into the ball game. You get the sense that David Winfrey thinks he can take uh, Paul Phillips, uh, ever since Phillips entered the game, Winfrey has been looking for the drive. He certainly feels that he can take him one-on-one. -on -one. Inbounds underneath to Jacobs. Doesn't go down, he'll go to the line for two. Oh, tantalizing on the rim, but it would not drop. Chris Jacobs will shoot a pair of Gatos. Didn't waste long to get his foul. Yeah, right into the game, picks up a foul. Four fouls aside now, as far as the team foul situation is concerned. 114 left in the first period. Uniontown as a team now, five for five from the free throw line here in the first period as Jacobs hits that one. It's a six point Red Raider lead. Uniontown is led by as much as nine. LH is led by as many as five. And right now it's 20 to 13. Jacobs with four points. Uniontown spreading it around as well. Good balance and look at the defense by Terrence Vaughns as he deflects it out of bounds. Vaughns has seven. Duncan has five. Jones and Jacobs with four aside as the Red Raiders have put up 20 first quarter points and we still have a minute seven on a turning clock as LH inbounds. Back to that 1-3-1 one, one zone now. LH gonna put two people on the baseline here. Baseline to force. Nice runner down the lane, didn't go though. Loose ball, swatted out of bounds. Swentoski tried to put it up, Chris Jacobs says no thank you, sends it into the crowd. Of course you don't have to send it far to send it into this no, crowd, it's just ringing the, yeah, ring the court all the way around. Now Mahoney. So Mahoney might have got away with a push off there a little bit. Winfrey disrupting uh, the action a bit, but Radcliffe was there to pick up the loose ball, and now Swintoski has it kicked out of bounds by Jacobs. That Uniontown pressure defense, that's their trademark. 
Their offense is generated by their defense. Yeah, they're not a real great half-court team. Well, that, uh, that Uniontown Red Raider defense really has become uh, notorious throughout the WPIAL. Every, that's the Red Raiders' trademark. It's the kind of defense that they play. Now Rose a couple, of, and Kevin a couple of substitutions now for the Raiders. And here comes De'Ari Jenkins with his first PT of the night. For Brandon Duncan. Brandon with a good first quarter for the Red Raiders. Now we'll see just how much Jenkins has. See how the knee holds up as the game goes on. Instant offense, though, off the bench. He's a nice guy to bring off the bench with his outside range. Right now, it's the Mustangs, though. There's Mahoney off the pump fake. Gets it to force inside. He gets the call. Good pass by Mahoney into the post. And, um, Six points for force. force. 26 seconds left in the first period. Uniontown up by five. Will they hold for one? Not giving them any indication that they will. Bonds, Jones, baseline jumper. That's no good. And force with the rebound. Contact. The foul will be called on McClee. You know what? I don't know about that one. Well, Force uh, Force got up and one. I thought Kevin had his had his position though. Well, Force is the one coming kind of coming across with the rebound, but uh, I think that's one of the one of those situations where once Force went down, you had to call something. Yeah. Force didn't really come over the top, so you kind of had to had to call it on McClee there. Fifth team foul on the Red Raiders. 14 seconds left now. Uniontown with some full court pressure. They don't want LH to be able to just walk it up and set up for one shot. Now the Mustangs will try to play for one. We'll keep an eye on the clock for you. Six seconds left. That's Swintoski. Four seconds left as he puts one up. Can't get the roll. McClee gets the rebound as time runs out. And that ends a very entertaining first period of play. This is what we hope for. And three more quarters at least still to go. After one quarter of action to score, the visiting Uniontown Red Raiders 20. The homestanding Laurel Highlands Mustangs 15. We're right back with second quarter action after this. With over 20 years of service and factory trained technicians, Ford Business has what it takes to provide your company with the edge to stay ahead of the competition. As an authorized Gestetner dealer, we can offer a digital solution that will fit your budget. Isn't it time to join the digital revolution? Ford also offers complete network installation computers and servers, as well as printers and fax machines. For professional service you can depend on, call Ford Business Machines. Real people, real solutions. This Herald Standard High School basketball game is brought to you by Fayette Tire, the men who know tires best, located at 350 Pittsburgh Street in Uniontown, or call 438-8527. We have quality Michelin, BF Goodrich, and Uniroll tires. Teletech is a worldwide leader in customer relationship management, utilizing the latest in telephone, email, and internet technologies to provide support for Fortune 500 companies. Centennial Chevrolet Dodge, located on Route 51 North Uniontown, dealing in new and used cars and trucks. Call 438-2577. Nationwide Insurance, the Bill Domit Agency at three locations. See Bill at Suite 116 Oliver Square, Uniontown, or 102 North Liberty Street, Perry. Or call 785-6946 for Brownsville. Exxon, located Route 40 and 21 Tobacco Junction. Incredible cigarette deals. Our deals are smoking. Full service available. Get gasoline into Zoom. Pay with Express Pay. Exxon, the best way to get there. Who provides the best service supply for your sick or troubled copier? That answer is a slam dunk. Just call the office heroes at Best Copier Company at 439-2378. Best Copier Company and Incorporation and affiliate of Brothers Laser Service. So along with Joseph Hope, this is HSTV Sports. Doubleheader action tonight as Uniontown battles Laurel Highlands girls and boys action. The girls game, of course, already completed. That was played Thursday evening as the uh, Phillies defeated the Uniontown Red Raiders to advance into the WPIAL playoffs and gain third place out of Section 2. Now on Friday night, it's boys action as the first place Uniontown Red Raiders battle the second place Laurel Highlands Mustangs. If Uniontown wins, they're undisputed section champs. If Laurel Highlands wins, there's a tie for the section title. And after one period of play, it's 20 to 15 Uniontown with the lead. And what a fantastic first quarter, Joe. All right, Dave and Winfrey will handle the basketball, being watched by A.J. Swintoski, man-to-man, once again by L.H., nice baseline move. Jones thought about it, and they'll swing it back around. Good patience by the Red Raiders. Jenkins still in the ballgame. Jacobs 
They'll dump it. Good. Oh, nice pass. Good feed. Jacobs can't finish. Tapped up, won't go, and it's ripped down by Timmy Mahoney. Lead it ahead here. Radcliffe to the corner. Mahoney's baseline around Jacobs. Down to Hicks, and Hicks is going to be fouled, and he'll go to the line. Did they get it on Jenkins or Winfrey? Jenkins will pick up his first foul. You know, watching Nelson Jones on the other end couldn't get that tip to go down, but that can't help but remind you of the first game when Nelson Jones went up and slammed home two rebounds, uh, two of the most exciting plays of that evening. Well, Mark Hicks trying to cut into the lead even a little bit more, and he misses the first one after the Mustangs had went four for four in the first quarter. Neither team missed a free throw in the first period. That's the first miscue from the charity strike. If they can hit this, it will be as close as they were when they called the timeout at 13-9. Mark misses them both, rebound Winfrey. And so hopefully that's not a prelude to the foul shooting problems that the Mustangs had at Uniontown. Winfrey holding the ball, and he'll go to De'Aire Jenkins, his first shot since coming off the bench. De'Aire Jenkins. And he hasn't missed a beat. If, and a steal. Ball on the deck and jump ball, and now we're gonna have to separate the scrum down there. Now that'll go to the Mustangs, and I'll tell you, if Brandon Duncan, who's about to re-enter the game, if Brandon Duncan can play solid for you as a starter, the luxury of bringing De'Ari Jenkins off the bench and providing that kind of instant offense is just going to make Uniontown that much better. Jenkins only playing for a couple of minutes. He'll now take a seat, but what an impact he had right there with the three. So it's 23-15, original starting five back on the floor now for the Uniontown area Red Raiders. And Timmy Mahoney will inbound. Get it to A.J. Swintoski, Uniontown man-to-man. Around Terrence Vaughn, they'll skip it all the way back out to Radcliffe. Inside they go, Nathan Force, great post move. Nathan Force with the drop step into the glass, into the, um, into the paint, and he cuts it to six points at 23-17. Uniontown will do their damage from outside, Laurel Highlands uh, from inside, you just saw that with Force. Jones. The Winfrey, good patience. Duncan now for another three. Nope, not going to go. There's a tap up by Chris Jacobs, rebounder. Mustangs want to run. They're two on two. Swintoski will hold up now, and a whistle and a foul. David Winfrey will pick up his second foul, and that is the seventh team foul on the Red Raiders. So Laurel Highlands now in the bonus. They'll go to the line uh, with the one and one. And what do we get? Yeah, one and one. David Winfrey will pick up his second foul. As Chuck told you, 17 foul, and to the line is A.J. Swintoski. On the other end, I thought Chris Jacobs might have been a better serve to try to pull down that offensive rebound and, and go back up it. with it instead of the tip. But again, uh, we don't have the perfect angle, and, and maybe that ball was just enough behind him that he didn't feel he could do that. And back to five at 23-18 off the Swintoski free throw. A.J.'s got another one coming now, a chance to get it to four. L.H. has creeped back in it from nine points down. Good job by the Mustangs as the Raiders went on that big run midway through the first period, but the Mustangs not going anywhere. They're making a statement. They're saying, be ready, Uniontown. We're here for the night. Winfrey around, good penetration, gets it to Vaughn. Terrence Vaughn will not go down, but there's Nelson Jones, and the ball will be knocked out of bounds by the Mustangs. Red Raiders putting up a lot of three-pointers. They've connected on three, but they've missed a pair uh, from beyond the arc on their last two possessions. Uh, they like to shoot that three, and their half-court offense is uh, uh, Predi pred uh, dictated a lot by trying to set people up for the threes. Winfrey's jumper badly missed, rebound by more kicks, and here comes the Mustangs with a chance if they hit a three to cut this to one point. Mahoney, pull up jumper. They'll call it on the floor, so he will go to the foul line, and it looks like Brandon Duncan is gonna pick up the foul. Eighth team foul now on the Uniontown Red Raiders. Uniontown wants to shoot the outside shot, but that doesn't mean they want Winfrey necessarily to shoot the shot. If you're the Mustangs, you'll let Winfrey shoot from 17 feet all night long. And Mahoney's free throw is down. And all of a sudden, the LH has creeped back into this. Mahoney now with three points on the night, and if he hits this free throw, the deficit will be three as the Mustangs, yes, indeed, getting right back into this 550 left in this first half. And he got them both, and we got ourselves a two-point ball game. So just when it looked like Union, three-point ball game, excuse me, just when it looked like Uniontown, it is a two-point ball game. I thought so. 
Yeah. Score board was late putting it up. They were late on the first free throw, yeah. Uh, so check that, it's 23-21. So uh, just when it looked like the Red Raiders were gonna put this one out of reach, uh, the Mustangs have crawled back in. Santino Sloboda in the game now for the Mustangs. And it's turned over. You know, this has not been a spectacular run by the Mustangs. This has just been one of them workmanlike efforts to claw back in. And Uniontown, uh, and we talked about how they can go on a run. They can also go into offensive droughts as well, because sometimes they can struggle uh, half court. And if they don't force some turnovers, uh, they can go without points for a while. And right now we're seeing them in a bit of a lull. 1-3-1, one, one, he get it to Hicks. There's Mahoney, his jumper will not go as it goes across the rim. That would have put LH in the lead. And Uniontown will bring it back with David Winfrey. Once again, the Raiders will just run in baseline cuts. Nothing spectacular by Uniontown offensively. There's Winfrey again. David can't get it to go down. Ball's tapped out. And there's uh, Chris Jacobs. Good move. Jacobs got it to go, and he's fouled. Kevin McClee gets a lot of credit on that as he kept that ball alive off of the Winfrey miss, allowing Jacobs to pick up the rebound. He makes a nice drive to the hoop, and he'll have a three-point opportunity for his efforts, but give Kevin McClee a lot of a cre credit there. And picking up the foul for Laurel Highlands, I believe, was Nathan Forth. Yes, his first foul of the night. Team fifth, Jacobs now with six on the night. We'll look for number seven. And Chris rolls it down and in. Sub coming for the Uniontown Red Raiders. And it's back now to a five-point ball game at 26-21. Uniontown, such a great free-throw shooting team, and that's a strength of theirs. And as you go into the playoffs, of course, you have to be able to shoot from the free-throw line, especially if you're trying to protect a late lead. Red Raiders seven for seven so far tonight from the strike. Dear Jenkins back in for the ball game, tapped out right there. Comes in, replaces Terrence Vaughn. So it's a five-point ball game as Radcliffe will swing it around. Good skip, Radcliffe puts it on the floor, gets to the 10, Craig Radcliffe. Back to three, jumper out of the corner, De'Aaron Jenkins. Two shots, two threes, six points, and the Raiders lead by six. Instant offense, Chuck called it earlier. Radcliffe, penetrating move. Shooting up is gonna be tapped out of bounds. Shooting up is Good Jimmy defense Hunt. by Nelson Jones as he stepped up to cut off that drive, forced the pass, and uh, again, the ball thrown away. And now the Raiders, after seeing their lead cut to two, have run it back out to half a dozen, and they have a chance to extend it here. Mahoney was trying to go down a baseline and skip it back out. And once again, we have a little talk here about clutching and grabbing. Swintoski and Winfrey, and uh, Winfrey gets a little <laughs> slap to the hands again. And I've noticed Winfrey do that a couple times, and now the official Saying enough. Don't want to see it again. And the Utah faithful on a technical. So back they come the other way. Man to man still by LH. Jones looks inside. Jacobs puts it on the floor one time. Can't get it to go down. And there's Timmy Mahoney with the rebound. Radcliffe. Lead feeds it ahead to AJ Swintoski. And he will pull it back out to Radcliffe. Nice look inside to Hicks. Oh, good spin move by Hicks, and he can't get it to go down. Winfrey runs it down in the corner. Now Mahoney trying to hold him up. No foul call. <laughs> Duncan sets the feet and buries the tray. Brandon Duncan for three, and we're gonna get another timeout called. And let me tell you why I laughed a moment ago. Uh, the, the, you said that they wanted the foul down at the other end. You, uh, a bunch of Uniontown fans standing up and shouting that the referees wanted the foul, but you know who I saw stand up first? We just saw her a few moments ago. Annie Malkoviak was the uh, was the first person to jump up. She was yelling at the officials in the girls' game, and she's still yelling at the officials, but that's the intensity involved in this game. And now Brandon Duncan hits the three, and suddenly it's a nine-point Red Raider lead. Well, a full timeout by Mark John, and you know what? Uh, Brandon Duncan now with a nice eight-point night. Dear Jenkins is coming with six. 14 points out of his two-man. He's got to love that. And uh, the storyline so far in this game Uniontown from beyond the arc, five three-pointers so far as a team tonight. That's 15 points, and there's your difference so far. One by Vaughns, two by Jenkins, two by Duncan. And the Red Raiders now have pushed that two-point lead out. Another run. This was a 23-21 ball game, so another 9-2 run by Uniontown to go along with a 14-2 run. What's impressive is the man-to-man -man defense usually should shut off the outside shot. Uniontown still getting open looks from three-point land against the LH man. Hicks forces one, but gets it to go down. Mark Hicks. 
Nice mid-air adjustment by Hicks. He was thinking pass, puts up the shot. Lead is seven, three and a half minutes left in the half. Jenkins will catch it on the wing. Union play with a good battle inside right there by Mark Hicks and Chris Jacobs. Uniontown setting some hellacious screens out there. Duncan thought about it, good decision. Jenkins now around. He's looking for his eighth point. He is three for three from the field. Coach, I think my ankle feels better. <laughs> and nearly a walk or a turnover, no call. And that's going to be stolen. Here comes Jenkins, needs to get the ball, get his steps and lays it up and in. And right now, De'Aaron Jenkins has come out smoking. Ten points off the bench. And, and now we'll get the foul on Jenkins. Yeah, that's his second. And I tell you what, they were looking for the knockout punch right now. 11-point Red Raider lead. Jenkins doesn't like the call, but I think that uh, I think it was the right yeah, call. Yeah, I think he hooked him a little bit. Yeah, looks like it. Ninth team foul, so we're still in the one and one. Bonds will re-enter the game for Uniontown. Mark John's going to call uh, everybody uh, other than Mahoney over and have another word with him. He's already used both of his 30-second timeouts. And here Jenkins gets a, a well rest here as he tries to play on a knee, make sure everything's all right. Timmy Mahoney with the first free throw. Cuts it back to his 10-point ball game. And Terrence Vaughns, I do believe, has come back into the basketball game. Timmy can't get the second one. So it's a 10-point advantage with 2.44 left in period number two. And we get a foul. This may be on more kicks. Mark Hicks and Chris Jacobs doing a little jockeying in the paint, and they're going to call Hicks. That's the sixth team foul, and now head coach Dave Shuck wants to talk things over. Well, and I think what he wants to talk about here is don't do nothing stupid. Well, right now, he's just uh, he's giving Brandon Duncan a, a nice, quiet lecture on the finer points of basketball. That's all. 2.39 left in the first half, and I really think, Joe, that we are entering a very important yeah. stretch of this basketball game. The rest of this half, very important right now for the Laurel Highlands Mustangs. Yeah, because right now they're down 10. You're within striking distance. You're just a runaway. But uh, remember down at Uniontown, right there at the beginning of the second quarter, Uniontown had pushed to get the lead out to like eight or nine. Had a chance to push out, could not. LH stood right in the ball game, was able to come back and win the game. Right now, you're at that crucial point again. You're up 10. If you're LH, you're like, we got to keep it under 10 here before we go in and half. And also, one thing to look at for the Red Raiders, they have two players out there on the floor right now with two personal fouls, yeah. and David Winfrey and uh, Nelson Vaughns. Gary Jenkins also has two, but he's on the bench. Uh, if either of those players pick up their third foul, that could spell trouble for Union down in the second half. So David Winfrey will swing it. Base, good move into the paint. Vaughn's, I think they're going to wave this off. And the third foul. Just what we said, they call him for over the top on the rebound. What a crucial play because you take two points off the board from the Red Raiders, and now Vaughn's has to sit on the bench with three personal fouls. And here, Jenkins quickly up off the bench for Coach uh, Dave Shuck. And you have to hope he doesn't get his third. That'll be thought, the, You know what, I thought he might come with Kevin McClee right here. Well, it was a gamble leaving Vaughn's in. Now it's a gamble bringing Jenkins in. This is the 10th team foul, so it's a double bonus, and Hicks will shoot two. Dan Riley will enter the game as well for the first time tonight for the Mustangs. First free throw is down. Cut it back now to a nine-point ball game. Boy, mark that sequence. That could be a huge play tonight. We'll have to remember that one. Could have been a three-point play by the Uniontown Red Raiders. Instead, third foul on Vaughn. And Mark Hicks buries them both. And by the way, let me stress, when I say could have been a three-point play, it was the right call. He went over the top, and the official called it right. That was a loose ball foul on Vaughn. So back to an eight-point ball game at 219. See if Uniontown tries to use some floor here and run the clock a little bit. Good baseline move. We get a block, and that's going to be on, I believe, number 40. Dan Riley, who quickly checked in and picked up a foul here. And that'll send uh, Uniontown into the bonus. Actually, uh, Joe, they're going to call that on Radcliffe, and that is oh. his third foul. And once so, again, why you don't yeah. use pin? Well, again, point guard, and uh, they, they had... Uh, John, in this very crucial stretch, didn't want to go the final two minutes of the half without his point man. They're calling this, apparently, this was a shooting foul. They're saying Jacobs was in the act of shooting, so he gets the second uh, free throw, even though he missed that one. Uh, but Radcliffe picking up his third foul, and, and I'll tell you what, he's, he, he's still out there, yeah. 
That's the first miss from the line tonight for the Red Raiders. Got the second one, and it's a 37-28 ball game. Back to nine. Oh, good move to the glass. Will not go. There's Mark Hicks keeping his feet. And the ball comes out, and the Raiders got numbers here. Four on two if they hustle. Jones to the baseline. Can't get it to go down. And Chris Jacobs is going to be fouled. And that is going to be on number 23. And that's on, no, he called it on 20. He called it on Craig Radcliffe, his fourth foul of the night. And he's going to leave Craig right now. I can't believe that. Wait a minute. Now the officials are going to talk. Yeah, I don't think so. I think that's on 23. I think that was on Nathan Force. Let's wait and see. Heading over to the scoring table. No. It stands. It stands, Joe. Radcliffe has four. And that's critical. And Jacobs carries the first one. Radcliffe will take a seat on the bench, but that's a case of a little too little too late right now. Uh, Coach Johns took the gamble, and then he took the gamble again. We'll see if he pays for it as uh, David, David Landman, excuse me, comes into the game for the first time this evening. And gets on both 39 to 28. Landman now in the basketball game. Well, Jacobs doesn't put much arc on that foul shot, but he's That's a very good drive. free throw shooter. Good look ahead. Now, well, A.J. Swintoski's going to have to step it up here a little bit. Hicks tries to force it inside. Tell you what, Uniontown smelling blood right now. Oh, Nelson Jones. Tell you what, it looked like one of his hits off the football in during football season. Boy, contact with a capital C, and now Jones has picked up his second foul. So a, a lot of uh, a lot of lights lit up on that Laurel Highland scoreboard there. We see uh, three dots next to Vaughn's name and two next to Jones, Jenkins, and Winfrey. But the uh, the big line right now is next to Radcliffe, where all four lights are lit up. And if that fifth one gets lit up, uh, he's out of the game. Of course, uh, he won't play anymore this half. Now Hicks from the line. And Mark gets the first one. Mark Hicks is five for seven as he is uh, just camped out at that free throw line here in the first half. 10 point Mustang How about deficit. just three buckets for the Mustangs in the second quarter? Everything else has come from the foul line. Yeah. So it's back to nine. The Mustangs within shouting distance of the Uniontown Red Raiders. Minute and a half left here in the first half. And now for the first time tonight, the Mustangs show a little zone, and you know what? They're going to hold the ball. Coach Shuck's philosophy in a situation like this, when I have the lead, I'm going to make them come out and play me. I'm not going to play their style of basketball. They're going to play my style. But he's got good shooters right now in the ball game. Good patience by Uniontown, making sure we got they got spacing. And they're going to stay back, Laurel Highlands is. Lamb and letting them know the dunking going through to the corner. Jenkins says, Coach, I'm on fire, but he can't get to go down. And Kevin McClee with a clean out. First miss from the field tonight for Dieri. No doubt that Kevin McClee pushed off. And now Laurel Highlands once again will go to the line. The free throw shooting, of course, hurt them in game one, but their free throw shooting keeping them Somewhat in game alive two. tonight, right now. Yeah. Back I said, the line goes more kicks. Talking about fouls, I said a few moments ago, no doubt about one of the particular calls. There's always doubt in this gym. Every call tonight, half the crowd's going to think it was the right call, and yeah, half yeah. the crowd's going to think it was the wrong call. <laughs> well, Kevin was just cleaning people out inside right there. Try telling that to the Raider fans. <laughs> well, we talked about it. Just three buckets so far in the second quarter. But Mark Hicks will just, be attempting his 10th free throw. And just seven buckets for the whole first half for Uniontown. Everything else has come from the charity strike. Seven, yeah, seven, uh, uh, seven twos and then the one three. three? Yeah, Swintowski hit the one three. Now a seven point game. Hicks, 8 for 10 from the line. Full court pressure by Landman. So 17 points. They've got almost that much from the um, foul line. LH come back, comes back rather to the man-to-man. -man. Winfrey into the corner. Jumper down. Number 25. Boy, how about Mark Camper hitting the three from the corner off the bench? Tell you what, Coach Chuck's got to be really pleased with his bench play tonight. Nice pass inside, short jumper won't go. There's Nathan Force, and he gets called for a walk. And right now Utah can push it back, push it, 
out over 10 to possibly 12, 13 if they could hit a triple this trip. Mahoney comes back in for Laurel Highlands. Amazing. They go to the zone for the one uh, uh, defensive possession. Then right when they go back to the man to man, again, we say man to man, you shouldn't be able to hit threes. Uh, LH goes looks. back to the man, and Uniontown right away. Uh, bingo from the uh, three ball corner pocket. Well, 14 seconds as we count it down. 10 as David Winfrey holds it. Eight, seven. Lamon's got him. They go to Jacobs. Overplay by Hicks. Back to Winfrey. Camper buries it. You talking about bench play. You talking about bench play. The Uniontown Red Raider bench in the first half. Jenkins and Camper combined 14, for 15, 15, 10 15 for Jenkins, points. 5 for Camper. 15 points off the bench, and Laurel Highlands has a 12-point lead. They got nothing off their bench in the first game. So one half a play down here from Laurel Highlands High School, and right now it's all Uniontown. It's the Red Raiders 44, the Laurel Highlands Mustangs 32. If you've been injured at work, you need to protect your rights. Don't settle for less than what you deserve. Call the hometown attorneys at Davis & Davis for a free consultation. Davis & Davis, a team of professionals working for you. With over 20 years of service and factory trained technicians, Ford Business has what it takes to provide your company with the edge to stay ahead of the competition. As an authorized Gestetner dealer, we can offer a digital solution that will fit your budget. Isn't it time to join the digital revolution? Ford also offers complete network installation computers and servers, as well as printers and fax machines. For professional service you can depend on, call Ford Business Machines. Real people, real solutions. This Herald Standard High School basketball game is brought to you by... Fayette Tire, the men who know tires best, located at 350 Pittsburgh Street in Uniontown, or call 438-8527. We have quality Michelin, BF Goodrich, and Uniroll tires. Teletech is a worldwide leader in customer relationship management, utilizing the latest in telephone, email, and internet technologies to provide support for Fortune 500 companies. Centennial Chevrolet Dodge, located on Route 51 North Uniontown, dealing in new and used cars and trucks. Call 438-2577. Nationwide Insurance, the Bill Domit Agency at three locations. See Bill at Suite 116 Oliver Square, Uniontown, or 102 North Liberty Street, Perry. Or call 785-6946 for Brownsville. Exxon, located Route 40 and 21 Tobacco Junction. Incredible cigarette deals. Our deals are smoking. Full service available. Get gasoline into Zoom. Pay with Express Pay. Exxon, the best way to get there. Who provides the best service supply for your sick or troubled copier? That answer is a slam dunk. Just call the office heroes at Best Copier Company at 439-2378. Best Copier Company and Incorporation, an affiliate of Brothers Laser Service. as we come back to Laurel Highlands Senior High School where the Uniontown Red Raiders lead the Mustangs of Laurel Highlands area 44-32. I'm Joseph Oak along with Chuck Durso and Chuck, the key to this ball game in the first half. Uniontown's bench giving them 15 points and shooting lights out. Well, you know, Derry Jenkins, of course, uh, unable to start because of some injury problems. So he's, he's really been a starter all year coming off the bench. Uh, and, and that's a great luxury for Dave Shuck to have. He comes in, nails two threes right off the bat, makes four field goals, ten points. And uh, and then Mark Camford right at the end of the half. And he's done that a couple of other times this year. It was another game earlier this year where he came off the bench right at the end of a quarter, hit some threes. And, and again, when we're talking about uh, Camford, you're talking about a, a six-foot junior. Doesn't get a lot of playing time for the Red Raiders and uh, I'm not sure exactly what the reason for that may or may not be. Of course, to play for Dave Shuck, you better play some good defense. Maybe that's part of it. I don't know. But we do know he can shoot the ball. Bring him in at the end of a quarter uh, for a little quick offense uh, right at the end of the quarter. That's good strategy. And we saw he nailed five points in the final 30 seconds of the half. Suddenly, uh, a seven-point lead is a 12-point lead. Big decision time for Mark John. Craig Radcliffe picked up four fouls in the first half. What do you do? Do you start him or do you sit him? I mean, I think if you sit him, you get yourself in big trouble. I think they're in big trouble either way right now, quite frankly. If you played him at the end of the half with three fouls, I guess you got to play him now. 
but uh, I, it was a huge gamble. And uh, talking uh, at halftime with Robert Chaney of the Herald Standard, who's uh, over on the other side by the bench, and he said he overheard the LH coaching staff uh, tell Radcliffe after he picked up the third foul, hey, you have three fouls, don't pick up the fourth. But again, when you're dealing with kids, you know, it's, it's and, and you know, Craig's a good kid. He's a smart kid, a very intelligent, savvy basketball player. But in the heat of the battle, sometimes you, 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 you forget these things. That was a huge fourth foul. Uh, to answer your question, Joe, I, I, you got to have him out there, I guess, to start the half. But my goodness, if he picks up the fifth foul, I, I don't well, know how LH gets back in the game. But my thinking is if you put him on the bench and they run it out to a 20-point lead, him coming in the game then may be no good anyway. But if he's in the ball game, they still have a chance to claw and stay within it. If he gets his fifth foul, it's just like he wasn't going to be in the ball game anyway with the four fouls sitting on the bench. Well, he is going to start the half, so uh, Coach John obviously agrees with you, and I think that's sound strategy, probably what you have to do. We'll see how it shakes out as the uh, second half commences. Well, Chuck, do you want to take us through here in the second, third quarter? Eight minutes here to go here in the third quarter. It's 44-32, and Chuck, uh, original starting fives. For both sides. And that, of course, means that uh, Chris Jacobs, Nelson Jones, Terrence Vaughns, David Winfrey, and Brandon Duncan are out there for the Uniontown Red Raiders. And for the Laurel Highlands Mustangs, it's Mark Hicks, Nathan Force, A.J. Swintoski, Craig Radcliffe, and, uh, of course, Tim Mahoney. And, of course, the key Radcliffe with those four fouls. Vaughns, let's not forget, he also, in some foul trouble, he has three fouls for the Red Raiders. Chris Jacobs and De'Aaron Jenkins, both with ten points in the first half. Seven for Vaughn, seven for Duncan, five for Mark Camper. And it was the five in the last 30 seconds. Mark Hicks with 12 points, but surprisingly, just two field goals. And a lot of fans still uh, just making their way back to their seats, so we had to delay the start of the second half just a little bit, but now we are underway. Laurel Highlands will open up in the man-to-man -man defense that they played for most of the first half, and great ball movement as Jones finds Vaughns underneath for a bucket, and the lead is 14, just like that. Nine points for Terrence Vaughns. Now the Mustangs underneath force, rejection by Vaughns. Right now, dangerous time for Laurel Hollis Mustangs. What a quick start by the Red Raiders. We said those final two minutes of the first half and the first two minutes of the second half. And Vaughns hits a three. Five, Terrence Vaughn points, running that lead out to 17. And, and we get a foul on Jacobs. Yeah, we said with two and a half minutes left in the half, that, that was a crucial stretch. The end of the first half, beginning of the second half, always important in any basketball game. And uh, right now, Laurel Highlands in some big trouble. And Coach Johns, he'll have to talk things over with the timeout here if it gets much more out of hand. Jacobs picks up his first foul of the night. Mahoney for three. Got, Got it. it. They oh, needed that in the worst way. Mustangs needed that big time, no doubt about that. As Tim Mahoney hits his first tray of the evening, he now has eight points. And the lead cut to 14. And we get the timeout. Mark John took the timeout, I'm assuming. Took it after the three, I think. I'm looking down at my scorecard here and didn't see uh, the official signal uh, which team called the timeout, but it is a full. We'll give the LH. Seven yep. minutes, 10 seconds remaining in the third quarter, 49 to 35, as the Red Raiders come out smoking uh, Vaughn's with a layup and a three-pointer, but Mahoney answers with a big three for the Mustangs. And they need to get Timmy Mahoney off right here. He's been quite relatively quiet. As we said, they've only hit one, two, three. They've only, they only hit seven buckets in the first half. They've only hit eight buckets in the whole entire ballgame. If you are watching Friday night to our same night coverage of this doubleheader, a reminder, that we will air the Uniontown Laurel Highlands girls boys double dip again for you on Saturday. Airtime will be two o'clock with the girls game, four o'clock with the boys game. On Sunday, you can see the girls game at 10 a.m. followed by the boys game at noon. Sunday evening, you can see the girls game at 6 p.m. followed by the boys game at 8 p.m. here on HSTV Good Sports. Good defense, and you know what? Craig Radcliffe has just fouled out. Terrence Vaughns with the basketball. Radcliffe, pressure defense. And he has a word to say to the officials. Has to be frustrated. Wait a minute. Jacobs is trying to inbounds real fast, but no, 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 no. We can't resume action yet. Don't be in a hurry, Chris. You don't want to rush things. This is good news for your side. As Craig Radcliffe is fouled out of the game. Coach John will take his time before he puts in the uh, substitute. 
Oh, that is so crucial. Yeah, it is. Right. And again, I, I, you know, there's a Mark Johns. He, he forgot more about basketball today than I've known my whole life. So there's no way I'm going to try to pretend like I know more about the game. I than thought he it was a good decision to play because when you're down 12, you know, if you, if you sit the kid out and you fall behind by 20, him coming back in a ball game that late is not going to help you. I understand that. I, I that's perfectly logical. I don't disagree with you, but I just. It's, I don't know. <laughs> I just don't know. It's sink or swim. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's... It really it, it is. It's six of one and a half a dozen of another. The, the key was picking up that fourth foul at the end of the half. That's what hurt more so than, than that foul. And uh, now, Radcliffe out of the game. A long hill to climb for the Mustangs as they trail by 14. They're in the zone, and David Winfrey will just... Uh, now, they're going to match up now. Yeah, they have to. Kevin Gatiss replaces him. Dave Shuck will not play a zone with a 14-point lead. Forget about it. Not going to happen. And now a turnover. Scramble, and we'll get a loose ball foul this time on Vaughns, and that's his fourth. Well, I don't want to say making up's hard to do. Now, Coach Shuck. Been... Yeah, Coach Shuck with a decision to make. How long does he leave Terrence Vaughns out there? And he's not making any move to replace him. He's on the floor and with he four is... fouls. And he is on to one official here long across the sideline. Craig Radcliffe now becomes a fourth assistant coach for Mark John. Force, baseline runner, deflected by Nelson Jones. Three on one. Oh, what a nice defensive play by Swintoski. Uniontown maintains possession, but Swintoski broke up the fast break. Now baseline jumper, air ball from Duncan. There's the chant. And Mark Hicks. Good pass to Kevin Gatos. Gatos baseline. His first two of the night. And LH trails by 12. Well, this will make Mark Hicks and them pick up their ball game here. I think you've got to sit Terrence Vaughns down with a 12-point lead and four personal fouls. See, there's, that's the decision you make when you're up by 12. Exactly. I think this is a huge gamble keeping him in the game. This ball will stay in Uniontown's possession as Mark Hicks knocks it out of bounds. See, there, there's a different scenario. Mark John was down 12, one of his better players. You're going to bring De'Aaron Jenkins in for Terrence Vaughns. Up 12 is not a bad choice. Some words between Jacobs and Hicks, and the officials step in right away. First, some of Jacobs' teammates as uh, Vaughn stepped in to separate David Lamon's going to come in the ball game now. Swintoski will take a seat. Tell you what, now you get a tough situation. You've got Radcliffe and Swintoski off the floor. And I'll tell you what, Mark John's on his horn. He's on Barry Rosner down here. Official talking now to uh, Jacobs. Had a few words with Hicks a few moments ago. Tensions starting to run high. And right now, Coach Shuck wants a 30-second timeout. And I think what Coach Shuck is explaining here is down here on the baseline, what's going on. And I'll tell you what, this is the first time, really, we've seen Coach Shuck on animated, not at his kids, but more importantly, at a situation. 30-second timeout by the Red Raiders. Shuck will use the 30 seconds to park at the officials. Well, assistant coach Rich Bierbauer says a few words to the players. 5.44, left in the third, 49 to 37. Uniontown Laurel Highlands, and it's picking up. Business picking up here, Joe. Yeah, it is a little bit. Uh, you wonder if Laurel Highlands has enough to come back. Uh, they're not going to quit here. Oh, absolutely not. And uh, look, at the, look at Dave Shuck still having a word with number, the He's officials. on 29 seconds now. He's still got one more second. Oh, man. I like how him and Coach Bierbauer color coordinate. Look like Christmas over there. Very nice. Yeah, maroon yeah. and green. Yeah, I like that. Or as Eric would say, that's the Herald Standard colors. Well, you're like Joan Rivers here on E, yeah, Joan. I'm impressed. Yeah. Jumped out of me on a JV game. As long as that doesn't make me Melissa. Junior yeah, down. Bond oh. for three. Dagger in the heart. Seventh, eighth, excuse me, eighth three-pointer of the night for the Red Raiders. Runner by Mahoney, no good. Jones with the rebound, and he's fouled. 52-37, all Red Raiders here in the third quarter. I think we got Timmy Mahoney for that one. If so, that will be Mahoney's first. It's the second team foul on the Mustangs. Yeah, it's Timmy's first. What a rejection by Gatos, but but give Brandon Duncan credit, did not get flustered, picked up the loose ball, found Vaughn's open on the wing. He nails his third three-pointer of the night. The Raiders now up by 15 with the basketball. Winfrey running a shot. Oh, nice look, Jones finishes it. Nelson Jones, 27 points the first time. Only six tonight, they haven't needed him tonight. 
They've done their damage from outside. Now Gatos free inside for a pair. Kevin Gatos is coming in to give Coach John a lift right now. Raiders by 15, 4.45 in the third quarter. Jones, or excuse me, Vaughn spots up for a jumper. That's no good, and Gatos with the rebound. Nathan Force calling for the ball here. Tries to hit Hicks underneath. And Hicks it to him. Did he shuffle? Indeed. Mark just couldn't get his steps down inside right now. Nelson Jones, strong defensive inside, forcing that turnover. Vaughns will bring it full court. Three pointers tonight for Uniontown. Vaughns has three. Duncan has two. Jenkins has two. Campert has one. That's been the difference tonight. So they're holding people coming off in screens. Vaughns, it's Jacobs, can't get the roll. Second shot, no good. Third shot, good. Third time's the charm for Chris Jacobs. And he has 12. 17 point Red Raider lead. Mustangs oh, in nice serious pass. trouble. Force. Nathan rolls it up and in. Force with the drop and a nice feed from Gatos. Nathan Force in double digits. He has 10 for the Mustangs, but they trail by 15. They, they need to make something happen quick. Yeah, they can't trade baskets right here. And now they're going to slow the game up a little bit here. We'll go into that weave now, three man weave. Jacobs, Bonds, Winfrey, and we'll get contact as Mahoney, Mahoney will be called for the foul. Mahoney and Brandon Duncan hooking up. Mahoney his second, third team foul on the Mustangs. 3.37 left in the third period. See, if I'm, I'm Coach Shuck right now, I'm, I'm attacking Laurel Hines. I want to knock him out right now. Well, old Moe definitely wearing the maroon. And Hicks there's a the nice turnover. Score. Jones turns it over. Now Hicks still with it. Force baseline. Jay is in. Well, they've gotten it back to 13. Fifth bucket of the night for Nathan Force. He has 12. And the Red Raiders come back. And here's Duncan. No good. Long rebound. Scramble. Bonds. Jacobs. Count it. Chris Jacobs. 14 for Jacobs. The lead back up to 15 for the Red Raiders. And now contact up top is Jacobs. Fouling Hicks. So Chris is second, team third here. Terrence Vaughn's picked up that fourth foul early in the third period. He has stayed out there for the entire second half and thus far has managed to avoid that fifth foul, unlike Craig Radcliffe, who started the half with four fouls and fouled out of the game in the opening minute. Now a long three from Hicks. Don't know if you want that shot if you're the Mustangs. They do get the rebound, though, and a second chance. Now a turnover, and Bonds is fouled by Hicks. Mark Hicks will be called for his second foul. That is the fourth, excuse me, the third team foul of the Mustangs. Three team fouls aside here in the second half. 58-43. Landman back into the game. Riley's back in the ballgame, and Sloboda will check in for the Mustangs as well. Trying to give some people a blow here, Mark John is. Tell you what, Riley was holding David Winfrey. Union down with their starting five still out there on the court as they have been the entire third period. We haven't seen Jenkins yet. Now Nelson Jones underneath draws contact. Just on Nathan Force, I do believe. Nathan had his hands straight up and down. Yep. Call this one actually on Santino Sloboda. His first foul. Nelson Jones will go to the line for a pair. Jones two for two from the stripe in the first half. The Raiders shot 10 for 11 from the free throw line in the first half, but Jones misses at Uniontown's first opportunity here in half number two. And very quickly, Coach John with the uh, with Mahoney and Hicks and company back in. Laurel Highlands shooting very well from the free throw line. Also tonight, they are 15 for 18 as a team. Uh, market improvement over their struggles the first time these two teams met. Interesting, uh, interestingly enough, though, Laurel Highlands won that first game. They're shooting well from the free throw line tonight, but losing by 16 as Jones connects. Yeah, Jenkins back in the ballgame now. It's Terrence Vaughn's going to get a well-deserved rest. No half-court trap now. Hicks is working. Winfrey nearly stole it. Now baseline runner by Mahoney, no good. Gatos keeps it alive. Swintoski chases down the loose ball, and he's fouled up top. That foul on the floor. They'll call that one on Bozik. Excuse me, not on Bozik. He's not out there. Brandon Duncan. Call that one on Brandon Duncan, number 31. His second foul. Laurel Highlands will inbound. 
Gary Jenkins, as Joe mentioned, into the game. He played just a few minutes in the first half. Made him count, though, with 10 points. And Laurel Highlands throws it away on the inbounds. Sloppy basketball there as the Red Raiders will be the beneficiaries of the Mustang turnover. 2.22 left here in the third period. The complete difference between this ball game and the first time, Uniontown shooting the ball extremely, a lot better than they did in that first game down in Uniontown. Absolutely. Offensively, they have been clicking, which they never could get their half-court game in gear the first time around. Now Winfrey send him to the line and count it. Hoop and a harm. Winfrey with a three-point opportunity. David Winfrey's first two of the night, and it's 61 to 43. Mark Hicks is nailed for his third foul. And now Winfrey will have the chance for the three-point play. David Winfrey's not the scorer on this team. His job to set up his teammates. He does a very good job of that. Any points you get a bonus, and he just picked up three. And now it's suddenly a 19-point Red Raider lead, their biggest advantage of the night, and we'll get a baseline foul on Nelson Jones. Well, the calling is close right now because I don't think they want to see it get out of hand. Wise choice. Uniontown Laurel Highlands. Things can get out of hand very, very quickly. quickly. Mahoney will go to the line. You know, all things said and done, Laurel Highlands has not done a horrible job of handling the Uniontown no. pressure. Not a lot of turnovers. They've shot well from the line. Uh, they have not shot the ball well from the floor. They haven't shot the ball well from the floor, and defensively, uh, Uniontown has been able to handle their man-to-man -man, uh, defense uh, with relative ease compared to that first game, and uh, that's been the difference. Laurel Highlands hasn't played horribly, yet they find themselves down by 18. Mahoney hits the first, strong on the second. Scramble for the loose ball, and nice play by Winfrey as he gets it to Jenkins. Duncan thought about the three, then thought about it twice. Now another drive down the lane. Nice swat by Riley. McClee there. Again, Riley. Now it's Winfrey inside. Riley again, but this time we'll get the foul call. Dan Riley blocked it once, blocked it twice, but they tally him for the foul the third time. Nice job by Kevin McClee to keep it alive again. Yeah, he has been battling on the boards, and you're right, Joe, that's a couple times tonight that he's been able to just keep the ball alive and allow a teammate to uh, benefit. That was Riley's first foul. This would be the biggest lead of the night, Chuck. Seventh team foul on Laurel Highland, so Uniontown in the bonus the rest of the way. This was a shooting foul, and Winfrey, who can struggle from the line at times, is three for three tonight. Now to one, three, one half court. Swing it ahead. And it is their biggest lead, as you mentioned, at 20. Runner oh. down the lane. No shot. See, but we'll get I don't know about line. see. I don't know about that foul because Timmy Mahoney was leaning in on, and I can understand why Chris Jacobs right now is, is trying to figure this one out because Timmy Mahoney kind of uh, leaned in on that one. Jacobs, I thought, might have been sliding a little bit, though. And usually they'll give the offense the benefit of the doubt. You have to be firmly planted uh, defensively at this level. You get to major college, certainly in the NBA. Defensive player will get a little more latitude. Here, that's going to go on the, uh, that's going to be called a block more often than not. Mahoney makes the first, 64-45. Mustangs trail by 19, make it 18 as Mahoney hits a pair. Dunking around to Kevin McClee. Good decision by Kevin. Yeah, they had some numbers there, but McClee, not the player who's going to run that two-on-one. Now Jacobs. Oh, 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 my. Pretty fast. fast to Jacobs. De'Ari Jenkins, and now we get a foul. And I think we're going to get a foul called on Laurel Highlands. It's going to be on number three. Was that on the shot? Yep. And it's going to be on Santino Sloboda. Yeah, Sloboda's second. And they're going to wave off the three-point play. I didn't uh, hear the whistle on the shot, so apparently that was a three-point attempt yeah, by was. Jacobs, and he made the shot, but he Kevin McClee... a lane violation. Yeah, Kevin McClee was called for a lane violation, so wipe off the point, and the lead is still 20, 66 to 46, a minute 21 left. Mustangs in a world of hurt right now, and they got to do something big and quick as uh, the ball batted out of bounds nicely by McClee. And I'll be honest with you, I don't know what the Mustangs can do in these final nine minutes with Craig Radcliffe on the bench. Well, Lamon finds Riley. Oh, ball swatted out of bounds. Don't call the foul. 
But one thing they do is just got to be patient, do what they do best. You know, don't try to do too much. Chris Jacobs will join Nelson Vaughn's right, with four fouls. And again, that is the one potential storm cloud on the horizon for the Red Raiders. Vaughn's and Jacobs with four, and Jones with three. They have a cushion, but you don't want to be losing a bunch of players, and Jones is going to come back in as Riley hits the first. Jacobs will take a seat for the Red Raiders. Riley's first point of the night. And Chris gets a well-deserved hand. Riley gets the drop. 18-point Red Raider lead with the basketball as we approach one minute left here in the third period. See what, go ahead. I, Utah's guards have made better decisions tonight, too. Duncan shot, no good. Look at McClee all alone, but he misses. Second chance, no good. Nelson Jones ripped away. We'll get a jump ball. Mustang possession. To a Kevin works so hard inside. Somebody missed an assignment there as Kevin McClee, nobody putting a body on him wide open for the layup, but he couldn't get the shot to go. A break for the Mustangs, and they now have a chance to cut into this lead. Section 2 title on the line. Uniontown leading the Mustangs by one game in Section 2 Quad A. Raiders win. They're section champs. Mustangs win. It's co-champs between Uniontown and Laurel Highlands. And in the long storied history of this rivalry, I don't know, have they ever been co-champions? They may have, somewhere along the line. I have no idea. Yeah. That ball batted out of bounds by McLean. They've been tied for playoff spots. They made him the one year played a pigtail game up at Connorsville. Right. Yeah, I remember that one. Well, they'll both make the playoffs this year. Uh, they could get a third crack at each other. Absolutely. Now Riley, free inside, thinks about it. Now he takes it. No good. Duncan with the rebound. Back come the Raiders, 37 seconds remaining David, in the period. David Winfrey's played a really nice third quarter. Red Raiders, will they pull for one now? They get some pressure, and we're going to get a foul called up top on Phillips as he fouls Jones. Again, even though we're only in the third quarter, Uniontown already almost in the double bonus. That's the ninth foul, and uh, Uniontown has also committed seven fouls to so Laurel Highlands in the bonus. Both teams in the bonus in the first, uh, here in the third quarter, and you mentioned it, Joe, the officials calling it tight here in the second half. Yeah, I don't think they want to see anything get out of hand here. That's Phillips' second, free, uh, second foul, rather, and Jones will go to the line. He's three for four from the free throw line. 26 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Uniontown leads by 18. And you know what? We talked about this a little bit during the pregame. Laurel Highlands woke up the slumbering giant, I do believe, the last time these two teams played. Because since that point, this is the Uniontown team I think a lot of people expected. They are just very aggressive defensively. And offensively, they're starting to shoot the ball well. This could be a bad time for people over the next couple weeks. Well, they're the proverbial Stuart Scott team right now. They're like butter. They're on a roll. Ask Pittsburgh Central Catholic about that. And uh, right now, ask the Laurel Highlands Mustangs about yeah. that. 15 seconds left now as that ball batted out of bounds. Mustangs will have a, an opportunity to play for one if they choose. Down by 20, Swintoski doesn't put up the three. Now Gato's baseline, that's no good. A good Hicks, rebound by Moore. Very nice for the rebound. That ball on the baseline and last touch by the Raiders. So with nine seconds left, the Mustangs will have another opportunity. So they're just running out at people better. Four, Four good seconds passes. left. This is for three in and out. No good at the buzzer, that won't count. Mahoney's three, halfway down and out. And the follow by Force would not have counted if it would have dropped. And we are three quarters of the way home. And right now, the Red Raiders flying high. And they're eight minutes away from an undisputed Section 2 title. After three quarters of play, the score, the Uniontown Red Raiders 68, the Laurel Highlands Mustangs 48. Fourth quarter action up next. Alarm Monitoring Systems located at 611 and Avenue in Uniontown. We sell, service, and install. The cost of annual monitoring is $96. Our own 24-hour local central station offers monitoring of security systems and 24-hour emergency repair service. We also offer medical alert, fire safety, insurance deduction. Call 439-1180 or 437-6101. Did you know? You can renew your driver's license and auto registration on the spot all in one location. 
at AAA at 111 West Main Street in Uniontown. We have the best prices in Fayette County and courteous AAA service. Ask about AAA member discounts. State and service fees apply. AAA, located at 111 West Main Street in Uniontown. Call 438-8575. For help with any of your legal matters, Davis & Davis has two convenient offices to serve you, Uniontown and Brownsville. They offer evening and weekend appointments and will even come to your home. Davis & Davis, a team of professionals working for you. Here we go. Welcome back to HSTV Sports. Chuck Durso along with Joe Hope, ready for the fourth quarter of the Uniontown Red Raiders. Lead the Laurel Highlands Mustangs, 68 to 48. Joe, we know who the three playoff teams from Section 2 will be. It's Uniontown, it's Laurel Highlands, it's Connellsville. Tonight's game, along with the Connellsville AG game, deciding the order of finish. And right now, it looks like if Connellsville defeats AG, uh, AG over in York Run, that we're going to have a second place tie between the Falcons and the Mustangs, unless Laurel Highlands does something big here in the fourth quarter. And that'll just make the uh, WPL a whole lot more happier trying to figure out that log jam. <laughs> right. As Brandon Duncan, and I'll tell you what, if LH does in this zone, they won't stay in it for long because uh, Dave Schock will pull it out. Duncan on the floor, Kevin McLean, Nelson Jones. It'll be uh, Terrence Vaughn's David Winfrey for the Mustangs. It is Forsh Hicks. Swintoski, jumper down. Terrence Vaughns with his 14th point of the night. And I tell you what, they are shooting lights out right now. Nine three-pointers. They get one more three, and, and why wouldn't they? They'll be in double figures. Jump around the corners, an air ball. Picked up rebound, ball's tapped up. Here comes Nelson Jones. The Raiders want to run, but a great decision here. No reason to turn everything anything over here. Just be patient and look for good shots. That senior leadership by Nelson Jones, as he knows, up by 23. Just pull it up. Right now, the clock is your friend if you're wearing the maroon. So it's Gatiss, Force, Hicks, Swintoski, and Mahoney, the five on the floor for the LH Mustangs. Terrence Vaughns was non-existent the first time these two teams played. He has 18 points with four three-pointers tonight. He's been very, Kevin McClee can't finish. How did he avoid the travel when he bobbled that ball? Uh, great uh, presence of mind by McLean not to shuffle the feet. He's rewarded with a pair from and the line. And Mark Hicks picks up his fourth foul, I do believe. From bad to worse for the Mustangs. Yeah, this has just not been their night at all. And Kevin McLean now will go to line looking for his first two points of the evening. I'll tell you what, though, Joe, that doesn't mean he hasn't contributed. Uh, he hasn't scored yet. No, tonight. but he's been a big force oh, yeah. on the glass. And defensively. Yeah. He gives them a little bit of a presence inside. Wide body. And uh, Uniontown doesn't have many wide bodies. But he's about it. The All-State linebacker with another year to go for the uh, Red Raiders football fortunes. And he'll be a nightmare for some people next fall. To the corner they go. That's, oh, nice dump down, nice look. Gatiss was trying to go to Hicks. It was a good look, but good defense by Uniontown. David Winfrey's just going to hold this thing out. Vaughn's wanted to turn the corner, nothing doing. They'll pull it back out. Brandon Duncan, tell you what, what a good job he's done. Nice still there, good play by Mahoney. Swintoski now will wait, skip it to uh, Timmy. Tell you what, they are just all over the ball right now, Uniontown is. This is exactly how they played against Pittsburgh Central. They were just all over the basketball, and Pittsburgh Central's guards just folded like a tent. Well, that's what you're going to get when you go up against the Red Raiders. Everybody in the Whippeal knows it. No one wants to draw this team in the first round. No one wants to uh, draw this team at any point. Uh, eventually. And they come off of Winfrey's leg, and oh. it stays with the Mustangs. Right call. Eventually, if you want to win the Whippeal, you're probably going to have to beat Uniontown. Yeah, you're going to have somewhere along the line, because like we talked before, if they come to play, I honestly believe it's the Uniontown Invitational. But it's a scary thought having to go up against that tough defense. In the more kicks, good move by the senior, good finger roll, can't get it go down. Mark continues to work hard, and we're going to get a foul. Is this on Mark? Yes, it is. And if that's on Mark, Mark has now walked the plank. And I'll tell you what, Mark's going to finish tonight with 12 points, not here in the second half. And Mark Hicks uh, will not only finish tonight, but that will finish his Laurel Highlands uh -huh. career as far as the regular season senior. is concerned. The 6'2 senior uh, will step off of this floor for the final time as a Mustang. Tell you what, he's done a great job for the four years he's been with Mark yes, John. He has. 
And, and again, you go back to that first encounter over at uh, uh, Uniontown a few weeks ago, and what an important player he was along with Nathan, Nathan Force. Those two were probably the key players for the Red Raiders. Uh, what a great year, what a great career, and he will now uh, get a nice round of applause from the Mustang fans as Mark Hicks disappointing finish to his career. But again, playoff action, so his career's yeah. not over. He'll be back next week. One thing Uniontown was able to do here, Laurel Highlands faithful never got into the ball game. And I'll tell you what, you talk about a scary thought, when, when, and I mentioned a few moments ago, senior leadership from Nelson Jones. He's it. Yeah, I mean, Alan Burnsworth, uh, also, uh, also a senior, uh, but he doesn't get much PT. Uh, as far as the players out there that lead the way for the Red Raiders, uh, everybody except Jones coming back next year. How scary is that? And there's one that they could get back that didn't play this year. This, this is very scary. Th this team, you know, there's always going to be speculation. There's been for the past couple of years about head coach uh, Dave Shuck, how much longer he's going to coach. Uh, I got to think he's. I got to think he wants to come back at least one more year. I think it depends on how far they go this year. Could be. Could be. Misses one of two. Nelson does, and it's 73-48 in favor of the Uniontown Red Raiders. Good move on the baseline by Nathan Force. It gets blocked. Nelson Jones once again decides to pull it out. Good swing pass here. Winfrey gets it on to Chris Jacobs, who's had a very good ball game here. There's Terrence Vaughn's. Oh, off the front of the side of the rim. When I go down, Gatiss with another good rebound. Gatiss Kevin has given him a lot of good minutes tonight for Coach Mark John. And Terrence Vaughn has fouled out. Well, I was just about to make and a joke. He knew it as soon as yeah. he hit him. I was just about to make a joke. Hey, Terrence Vaughn's missed a three. You better put him on the bench. Uh, well, now he's going to go on the bench uh, because of the uh, fifth foul. But how about Terrence Vaughn's four three-pointers, 18 points on the night. Uh, he leaves the game as the leading scorer for the Red Raiders. And the Mustang fans are having some fun now, chanting goodbye to Terrence Vaughn. But you know what? The Red Raider fans are responding, scoreboard. Back of the iron won't go for Kevin Gatiss, but do we get a lane violation? And I think it's on David Winfrey. Now they're going to call foul on David. No, that, no, it was, uh, you were right first time, Joe. It was a lane violation. That's the second time Uniontown's been called once when on their end, which negated a free throw they made. And now this one uh, gives Gatos a second opportunity. And this is a one-on-one, -on -one, so uh, costing themselves some points. And Kevin gets that one. Not that that's a problem right now. With 5.34 left and a 24-point lead, uh, Uniontown in very good shape. Chance to get it back to 23, and L.A. does. This game changed right there at the end of the first half and the beginning of the second. And out of the ball game now is Kevin Gatiss, but a good job Kevin has done. Well, you're so right, Joe, because Uniontown had that first half run. Jones gets a block, foul. And Nathan Forge, I do believe. Uniontown had that first half run where they extended their lead a bit, but Laurel Highlands did a good job, as we mentioned, of staying in the game at that point, down about seven or so. And then uh, and then you're right, at the end of the first half, Uniontown stretched the lead to 12, immediately build it, built on that lead in the second half. And, and you're right, that five-minute stretch at the end of the first half, beginning of the second half, I think is where the Raiders put this one away. Santina Sloboda picks up his third. Nelson Jones will go to the line. And the Raiders look to extend this margin. Wow, they missed one. Jones now six for nine from the free throw line. Jones in double figures has 10 points, two field goals, and six, as we just mentioned, coming from the strike. And he gets one of two, 74-50. And the lead balloons back to 24 to the corner to Sloboda, and Santina Sloboda gets pushed on Chris Jacobs. And he's out of the game now, his fifth. Well, see, I only got Chris for four. But Chris has got five, and he's gonna walk the plank. And Kevin McLeese suits it up, and Coach Shuck's probably looking, do I gotta put a uniform on? Well, you know, as we said, and, and boy, Jacobs, a demonstrative uh, gesture there. Be careful, Chris. Uh, no reason to get a technical foul here at the end. Uh, just have a seat whether you like the call or not. As we mentioned, this was the one problem Uniontown could face as they start to lose players. But the lead right now exactly. is 24. And I'll just turn to Kevin McLean now to do some. This is a good seat. 
But you know what? What bells them out a little bit is De'Aaron Jenkins being healthy right now. Exactly. And nobody else at the moment in foul trouble. Jones has three. So, uh, you know, you don't, not that you want to lose those two players, but they're still in good shape. And Santina Sloboda can't make the free throw. Well, the Mustangs can't afford to make any mistakes the rest of the way, and that includes free throws. you got to make those. Brandon Duncan all, all alone. De'Aaron Jenkins and De'Aaron will catch it. Tried to shoot the layup before Winfrey he caught the ball there. Around Riley, and he does. Trying to dump it, stolen by Sportota, and Kevin McClee will be called for the hold. Well, that was a breakaway layup by Laurel Highland, so not a bad foul by McClee. Well, I got Kevin for four. I think that's McClee's that's third. I mean, you yeah. know what? I gave one of his to Chris Jacobs. That, that's what it was. Yeah, that's his third. Sloboda back to the line, and... Right now, it's just a sloppily played basketball game as Union Town had raced out to the big league. Mustangs would have had an easy two there. Uh, by, by committing that foul, McLeod forcing Sloboda to earn them now from the line. He does make the first, and we'll get a substitution as Riley's going to come in the game for Sloboda. One not. of two, and we get a foul down on this end, and that's on Timmy Mahoney. And now, you know what? We're going to make this a long one, huh? Well, yeah, it could be a foul fest the rest of the way. 5.04 left. Both teams now in the double bonus as uh, the Mustangs have committed their 10th team foul, and McClee will now go to the line. Every foul from here on out will result in two free throws, and Laurel Highland's in a situation where they're going to have to foul the rest of the way. So Eric's going to have to get this game on by midnight. Hey, <laughs> buddy. This one will stretch out to 11.59. And don't forget, if you're watching on Friday night, Kevin rolls the first McClee misses. Uh, the, boy, the, the girls game will air again Saturday at 2, followed by the boys at 4. Again, Sunday at 10 a.m., followed by the boys at game at noon. And Sunday evening at 6 p.m., followed by the boys and game at you'll 8 need to follow, And you'll need to follow. And you'll need to follow the Herald Standard uh, probably Wednesday. And then next week, as we do not know where we'll be right now for the playoffs, exactly. it all depends on Larry Hanley and his crew. 75-51. But we'll try to cover as many people in the area as possible in the opening round of the Whippeal playoffs. Winfrey, the Jones, Jones. Oh, lays it up high off the glass. Thought he was going to throw it down. But I don't think he felt comfortable. Now a steal. Back come the Raiders. Winfrey wants to run. Give it to Jones. He'll pull it back out. Great decision. Swing it to Jenkins. Had the feet set. They'll be patient now. 26-point lead by the Uniontown area Red Raiders. Winfrey trying to go around Riley. Brandon Duncan, who had that good first half, continues to give great moments for Coach Shock and the Uniontown Red Raiders. And now they're going to open the floor and they're going to look for layups here. And as a coach, when you're down this floor, there's not a whole lot you can do. Pass inside. Winfrey is fouled. He will go to the line to shoot a pair. Well, you, you know, you just said it, Joe. There's nothing you can do at this point. Uh, Laurel Highland is going to keep playing hard because that's what they do. They play hard. And Coach John, uh, an excellent coach, and he, he stresses playing hard all the way. The Mustangs aren't going to quit. But let's be honest, there's nothing they can do at this nah, point. Right now, it's been all Uniontown area. Man, they continue now to shoot well from the foul line. Yeah, how about Winfrey? Four for four from the line. He's the one weak link. Uh, from the line that the Raiders have among their starting five normally, but he's looking very, I mean, not just that he's making the shot. Now he's looking a, good shooting the ball. good looking stroke out there, yes. 79-51 in favor of the Uniontown Red Raiders. 1-3-1 one, one coming now. Nearly stopped, snapped away, st stripped away by Winfrey. They'll skip it all the way to the corner. Jumper on the way and back of the iron won't go. There's De'Aaron Jenkins who has really came in and gave Coach Shuck some good minutes tonight. And it looks like the ankle or knee or whatever, it looks like it's back in full strength, and that's just going to make the Raiders even that much more dangerous. Yeah, he looks strong out there. He doesn't look like he's favoring that leg at all. Jenkins, Winfrey now out. Yeah, work on that stall. you got to play with the lead in the fourth quarter in the playoffs. Oh, turn it over. You don't want to do that in the fourth quarter in the playoffs. Well, it was so strange last year. Here's a team that got to the state title and technically throughout the whole year never won a title. Did not win the section, did not win the whip, did not win the states. But at least tonight, they're going to get something. They're going to get the outright section two championship. Well, they couldn't match up against Peters Township last year. Inside, Gatiss and Kevin continues. Good feed from the corner. 
And Even Coach Chuck takes a timeout here. Yeah, Peters Township defeated the Red Raiders twice last year, winning Section 2. Peters Township not in the section this year. Uh, so Uniontown finished second. They were eliminated in the uh, semifinals by Penn Hills in the WPIAL tournament, uh, but then advanced all the way to the championship game uh, in the PIAA. And this year, uh, they would love to get back to Hershey, but before that, uh, you know, they want to they want to put up a few titles, yeah. and they're going to get one tonight. Right. And I think that's the thing. They, they remind me a lot of the Brownsville team that went to Three River Stadium in 97 there's a team that went all the way to three rivers never won a title did not win the conference that year lost in the whippeals i mean it's it's tough but you know you're the second best team and you don't get nothing that's right they lost that late game to bell vernon last the end of sex the end of conference season then they lost in the whippeal finals and i mean and then won the conference and, the next year then won that's, the conference the next year shared right. it with the uh Chalary cougars in the central right. conference well, I tell you what, you mentioned, Joe, a few moments ago, and again, a reminder to the fans out there listening, make sure you check out with the Herald Standard what those pairings are and, and find out where we're going to be. Show, we're also going to hit it hard. I think Wednesday we're really going to get you set up for the playoffs. And hopefully the WPIL will do us a favor and give us some nice double headers yeah. we can carry. And, Chuck, anytime you feel free, the studio is open to come into the sports show. I'll take you up on that. Anytime. Um, just let Eric know because we'll arrange the schedule. we Will do. I know we're also going to do baseball preview coming up pretty soon. I like the sounds of that. Baseball preview? On this beautiful day we had here oh, on this yeah. Friday, I love the sounds of baseball starting. Baseball preview. That should be in a couple weeks. We're going to try to get the sections that have been realigned and get everybody set up for that because you don't know about it, but high school baseball is only about a month about a month away, a month and a half. I think i got to go home and oil up my glove tonight now that you mentioned it. And we should have some good baseball teams in the area. David Winfrey is going to be fouled by Riley. David Winfrey will go the line. Obviously, we have no idea what Connellsville did in York Run. No. Their game should be winding up about now as well. If Connellsville defeats Albert Gallatin, and that's no gimme in Albert Gallatin in the against way the good Colonial, Colonial squad. Right yeah. now, the way Coach John Vijay's squad's been playing. If Connellsville does win that game, though, then they will tie Laurel Highlands for second place here in Section 2 at 9-3, and three, with uh, Union Town, of course, winning the section at 11-1. and one. If Albert Gallatin beats Connellsville, then LH finishes second and Connellsville third. 2.55 left here. David Winfrey has buried all... All seven of his free throws tonight. They have shot lights out tonight. They have just been extremely good, solid from the floor and from the foul line. And Winfrey stepping up there and shooting that with confidence. You can see yeah. it in the stroke. 28 point advantage, nearly stolen by Winfrey. Nice no look for Santina Sloboda. Sloboda with three, but the deficit is 26 as Uniontown has just run away from the Mustangs, just like the first game of our doubleheader. We thought it would be a close one, and the Laurel Highlands girls team uh, just took a stranglehold right from the start, and it was never a contest, and the same thing has happened uh, the opposite school here on the boys' side. Nelson Jones handles the ball as they're into their delay game. Coach Shuck, and I tell you what, Coach John and his coaching staff, not a whole lot more can do tonight, but I'll tell you what, they'll be ready for their opening round playoff test, and they'll be hungry. And they'll be a dangerous team to face in the upcoming Whippeal playoffs because they've got enough guard, they've got some decent guards, and they've got enough size to cause people problems. They beat, let's, let's not forget, they beat the Red Raiders, Raiders on Uniontown's home them. floor. They can beat anybody. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, it all is going to depend on who they get matched up with in that opening round. And Connellsville will also qualify out of Section 2 Quad A. Possibly we have a two-way tie for second, and the Uniontown Red Raiders are going to win the Section 2 Quad A title, and they're going to do it in Uniontown at Laurel Highlands. For Bill Swan's squad, like the Rodney Dangerfield of Section 2, uh, nobody mentions them, uh, and here they are, possibly a second place team, and, 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 and they're, really, they're going to do some damage. Really, just a couple buckets away from being battling for the section title in the last week. And Riley will foul. And the Uniontown fans. Chanting, trying to get the chant it. Yeah, they're chanting section champs right now, and they have every reason to celebrate. It's going to be a happy, happy Friday night in Red Raider land, and of course, uh, misery tonight in Mustangville. David finally missed one. <laughs> Chuck you the... looked at him and went, please make one. And did you... Kicked out. Yeah, we just lost a little power here right at the end, but again, we didn't miss uh, much as the final a, minute running down. A bucket by Santina Sloboda and a late layup by the Uniontown Red Raiders, and the Red Raiders are walking out of here with an 83-57 victory over their cross-town rivals, the Laurel Highlands Mustangs, and more importantly, Chuck, 
They are your Section 2 Quad A champs like everybody thought they would be. Big celebration at midcourt and a well-deserved section title by the Uniontown Red Raiders who came into this season as the big, the heavy favorites in the section and the number one ranked team in the WPIAL. And that's tough to do, to, to live up to those kinds of expectations. They started the season at the top of the mountain. They didn't spend the entire season at the top of the mountain, but most importantly, they finish the season at the top of the mountain. They are the section champs, and they deserve to be. They are the best team in Section 2. I don't think there's any doubt about that. Nope, and I'll tell you what, the wake-up call I thought came over at Uniontown when the Mustangs upset them in the first game, and they let it. They got it snowballing from that point on. I tell you what, they have literally taken their last three opponents and blown them off the floor. And quality opponents, yes, too. Yes, they have. Because this Laurel Highlands team can play. We were just talking about that uh, a moment ago. This uh, this Mustang team is solid. They won at Uniontown, and, and, and they are quality. They got some great inside players, some good guard play, and, and Uniontown just dismantled them as they did to a Central Catholic. I mean, this Raider team, and, and the one thing about the playoffs, of course, one night it can all fall apart, but right now, this Raider team is just flying high. Old Mo wearing the maroon and white, and uh, as I said uh, near the end of the game there, nobody wants to match up against them. So you missed the last uh, 45 seconds of the basketball game, and we apologize for that, but we had a, a court kicked out, but that happens sometimes, especially in this atmosphere and this gymnasium. Let's uh, go back, and I think, Chuck, the key to this ball game, the last 30 seconds of the first half, Mark Camper hit a three, buried a two, and then they come out in the second half and quickly got five more, and they take a what was a, a very basically a 10-point lead, stretched out to 17 and lights out for the Laurel Highlands Mustangs. And I think the, also, the, the thing that also happened uh, when we talk about the end of the first half and the beginning of the second half is not just what Uniontown did, but three very important things that happened to Laurel Highlands, and that was the third foul on Craig Radcliffe, yeah. the fourth foul on Craig, Craig Radcliffe, and the fifth foul on Craig Radcliffe when he picked up those two late fouls at the end of the first half to give him four and then fouled out early in the second half. Again, when you lose by 26, if Craig Radcliffe plays the entire game, I don't. I still don't think Laurel Highlands wins. But it's close to the ball game. They had no chance once he was well, out. Well, and I, and you know what? Everybody's going to probably try to second guess Mark John, hold him out. But when you're down by 12, and he is your point guard, he is probably your second leading scorer on the team behind more kicks. If you put him on the bench and you fall behind by 20, you're in the same boat you are now sure. when he fouled out of the ball game. So Mark had to make the decision. I thought it was a good decision. Dave Shuck gets away with one. He plays Terrence Vaughn's right. for almost a quarter and a half with four. Terrence finally fouls out late in the ballgame after, um, after it had been decided. So two decisions, same th rule of thumb. One coach wins, the other coach loses. I'm, and I'm sure Coach Johns is not going to, well, maybe he'll second-guess himself, but I probably will not second-guess himself as far as uh, starting Landman in the second half. He may second-guess himself for leaving Landman in at the end of the first half after he picked up the third foul. That might have been the time to pull him with, uh, I believe there was 40-something seconds Well, left. you know what? It that was one of situations where he may have been getting ready to turn to take somebody in and the fourth foul happened just like that. We'll yeah. never know. Yeah. But it may have been one of them situations. But... Laurel High is not a very deep team, and, and you, you know when you start getting Radcliffe off the floor and Hicks off the floor, things start going a little bit awire for the Union for the Laurel High's Mustangs. And you know what? That's a decision that Mark John made, and I think it was a great coaching decision myself. Probably the same one I would have made, but I'm not putting myself in the same category here as Mark John. But uh, it's it's a good sound basketball coaching decision. Uh, let's take a look, Chuck, if we can here with the leading scores. Let's go with the Union Town Red Raiders. I got Jacobs for 16, Vaughn's with 14. Nelson Jones with 13, 10 for De'Air Jenkins off the bench. Big second quarter for De'Air. Nine for Winfrey, um, seven for Brandon Duncan, including a big first quarter. Big five points for Mark Camper. Everybody's going to look in the book and say, hey, Mark got five. Big five points. Buried a three, got a two, pushed a, a lead out to 12. And then um, two points for Kevin McClee on two free throws. And everybody's going to look at Kevin and go, oh, Kevin only made some free throws. Kevin, you joined the glass, keeping the balls alive a lot of times for the Uniontown Red Raiders. Now, let me just jump in just one quick correction. And, and again, these are unofficial, these are, so your numbers could be right. I have Vaughn's with 18 because I have him with four three-pointers uh, and a pair of field goals and also two free throws. But at any rate, uh, whatever the final number is, uh, a great balance when you look at four Red Raiders in double figures in Vaughn's, Jones, Jacobs, and then uh, Jenkins off the bench, also in double figures, and Winfrey and Duncan just missing as well. That's the kind of balance that Coach Chuck likes to see. He doesn't have a team that, or he doesn't like to have a team that depends no. on just one player. He wants them playing as a team, both defensively and offensively, and boy, tonight it was textbook. On the other side for Coach Mark Johns is Laurel Highlands Mustangs. Two by Radcliffe, the fouling out early in the fourth quarter really did them in. Mark Hicks had 12 in the first half. He ends with 12. 
10 for A.J. Swintoski. He had 10 at the end of the third quarter, comes up scoreless in the fourth. 12 for Nathan Forge. Nathan gets nothing, and he only had four in the second half. Five for Santina Slobota off the bench. Two for Dan Riley, and I got Kevin Gatiss for two, four, six, seven, eight, and that looks about right. Um, I got Mahoney as well with 11. Okay. Um, I so heard I missed Timmy at. I got Timmy yeah, with 10, so yeah. we'll give Timmy 11. And, uh, and, and that, you know, the, Laurel Highland's also putting three people into uh, double figures, but, uh, uh, but still not enough balance for the Mustangs. Couldn't handle are, the are, are uh, okay? couldn't handle the defensive pressure uh, by the uh, Red Raiders and as well as they needed. It's, it's, so, it's so nice to see the happy cameraman come back. And, and and when I say that they did they did handle the pressure pretty well most of the way, but still a little little trouble with the basketball. And I think the real key was Laurel Highlands in that first game. Their man-to-man -man defense gave Uniontown yeah. fit tonight. Uniontown handled it. And I think you got to give the credit to Dave Shuck for that. Obviously, that goes to good coaching. He had his Raiders prepared for that man-to-man. -man. They were setting some unbelievable screens out there, freeing people up for three pointers. And again, the Red Raiders connect on nine three-point shots in this game. Well, and you know what? We're going to wrap this up because my man Eric needs to get everything back to the studio tonight. But uh, tell you what, Chuck, it was a great two nights of basketball up here at Laurel Highland Senior High School. They get a split in the cross-time rivalries. LH's uh, girls team will go to the playoffs. The Uniontown boys are the section champs. LH will also be in the playoffs as they wrap this up tonight with an 83-57 win for the Uniontown Red Raiders. Don't know where we'll be for the WPL playoffs, so you just got to hang in with us, and as soon as we find out, we'll let you know. Hopefully we get a couple key situations, a couple uh, nice doubleheaders somewhere. Hopefully we get a nice doubleheader at Albert Gallatin High School, which would be just great. But that's going to wrap it up tonight for Harold Standard High School basketball, our final regular season game of the year. The final score tonight, it was Uniontown defeating their cross-time rivals, LH 83-57. For Chuck Durst, I'm Joseph Hoke. We'll see you next in the WPIO playoffs.